Today we get a story of a Minecraft kid that gets angry at his teacher so decides that, you know, his revenge will be uh, farting in the teacher's face and then going completely insane. This is probably one of the weirdest stories I have ever received, so sit back, relax, uh, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber Noah. So this all happens one day when Noah is just chilling in his class, and there's another guy in his class, and we're gonna call this guy the Minecraft Kid, because he's obsessed with Minecraft, he's always wearing the Creeper hoodie, you already know how it goes, and obviously, right, if you like Minecraft, this video is not against you, because bro, I love Minecraft, look at the background gameplay. But anyways, right, so Noah was just chilling in class, and he looks to, like, his left, and directly, like, to the next of him, directly adjacent to him, is the Minecraft kid. And him and the Minecraft kid weren't, like, best friends or anything, but he had nothing necessarily against the Minecraft kid. And the teacher was beginning, beginning the lecture on whatever it was, and he sees the Minecraft kid, you know, he had his computer out because everyone had their computers out. It was, like, sixth grade, and that was, like, the first time that, like, you know, they were given school computers or whatever, or Chromebooks, or I, I don't even know. He had his computer out, though. And, like, you could have your school-given Chromebook or school-issued Chromebook, or you could bring your own computer. So the Minecraft kid, you know, brought his gaming computer. And the difference with today and any other day is Noah looked over and saw the Minecraft kid reach into his backpack, pull out a mouse pad and a gaming mouse. You know one of those, like, gaming mice that, like, all light, light up and glow and all that stuff? Yeah, he whipped out one of those. And at first Noah's like, oh, he just wants to use, a, like, a mouse instead of the trackpad. Like, that's totally understandable. Trackpad sucks. I 100% agree. And anyways, right, you know, Noah doesn't even really pay that much attention. And that is until he hears the Minecraft soundtrack. Super, super, super loud. Minecraft soundtrack is beautiful. I've actually, like, gone to sleep to it a couple of times on Spotify. But that's, that's beyond the point, right? Anyways, right, so Noah is, like, he realizes that the Minecraft kid next to him is not only, like, not really caring that, you know, he has his entire gaming setup out, he also just doesn't care that Minecraft music is blasting away. And sure enough, right, you know, you hear the Minecraft soundtrack, you hear the walking footsteps in Minecraft, you hear him beating up some chicken and the chicken making, like, squeaking noises or whatever. And so Noah's just like, oh my god, like, this kid's gonna get in a ton of trouble. But sure enough, right, the music was just so loud that the teacher, like, turns around and, like, looks at, like, the Minecraft kid and is like, Minecraft kid, like, turn down that music. Like, you can't be playing music in class. So the teacher didn't realize that this was just, like, music to a video game. The teacher just thought that the Minecraft kid was playing, like, music in class, which, you know, sometimes kids have, like, tried to, like, listen to music, but normally they'd use headphones or whatever. And the teacher says, hey, no listening to music in class, you gotta be paying attention. So the teacher kind of doesn't think anything more of it and goes, back to their work. And so the Minecraft kid, sure enough, just turns off the volume, but keeps on playing Minecraft. And it's super obvious because he's like whipping his like mouse around and like clicking really fast and doing all this stuff. And obviously if the teacher paid like really close attention, he would realize that the Minecraft kid was not just listening to music, but was not listening to music at all, but instead was playing a video game with music in the background. So anyways, right, Noah's like, dude, this kid's gonna get caught. And sure enough, right, you know, the Minecraft kid, I think, in the beginning was playing, like, normal Minecraft. But then he goes on to one of those servers. I think he's playing Bed Wars or something. And this kid is, like, really good at Bed Wars. And when you're really good at Bed Wars, a lot of times you'll be clicking super fast so that you can place more blocks. Or maybe when you're fighting someone, you take less knockback and you might get more hits. So this kid starts butterfly clicking, which is when you take two fingers and rapidly slam your mouse with it. And sure enough, right, the kid in the middle of class starts spamming his mouse, like, and Noah was just like, dude, that's so loud. And sure enough, the teacher turns around and is like, hey, Minecraft kid, are you playing video games in class? And the Minecraft kid legitimately keeps on clicking because apparently he's in the middle of like a fight or something, like a PvP fight, and keeps on clicking, ignores the teacher for a good 10 seconds. The teacher looks at him in disbelief, and the Minecraft kid looks up and is like, huh? And the teacher's like, shut off your like shut off your computer. You're not allowed to be playing video games in class. First you're listening to music, now you're playing video games. Like that's super disrespectful and distracting. You're not just distracting yourself, you're distracting everyone else in the class, and that is totally not fair for them. And he said and then the teacher followed up by saying, "Minecraft kid, you're on super thin ice. 
turn off like your video game. So the Minecraft kid is like, ah, oh, whatever, man. And like, you know, closes the computer, like turns, like closes the computer screen, whatever. And kind of like slumps back in his chair with his arms crossed because man, he just, you know, he was, he wanted to play Minecraft. He didn't want to pay attention to what, whatever was going on in class, right? So at this point, Noah thinks that the Minecraft kid is done being stupid in class, but Noah was very, very wrong to say the least. Because anyways, right, Noah kind of goes back to paying attention to the class, you know, trying to like take some notes. He's trying to do well in this class. And then Noah, to his surprise, hears clicking noises. And he's like, all right, there's no chance that like the Minecraft kid is back to playing his video games. But sure enough, the Minecraft kid had taken out his computer again and went back to playing Bed Wars. And once again, he's on his mouse going like clicking it literally as fast as he possibly could. And that he's not being slick. He's not being like anything like, he's not being clever or anything like that. Cause the teacher immediately turns around and is like, Minecraft kid, I told you, like you can't be playing video games in class. I already told you, you were on super thin ice. Like that's it. If you can't like pay attention and you're gonna be distracting everyone else, then you can't be in this class. Go to the principal's and like principal's office and she'll deal with you. And the Minecraft kid just looks at him and says, what did you say to me? And the, and the teacher's like, no back talk. Go to the principal's office now. And from here on, things were about to get much, much worse. But real quick, comment Minecraft down below if you want to harden your comment, as Minecraft is the secret word of the day. And by the way, if you've been binge watching my videos, please leave a comment like this down below so I can heart it, maybe reply, just so I can know that you're doing it and say thank you. Because when you watch a bunch of my videos in a row, it really does help out the channel more than you can even imagine. And I mean, also, if you want to be like this guy, guy, I'm not saying to leave a playlist of my videos on overnight when you go to sleep with the volume on 1%, but I'm also not saying not to do that, wink. Wink, 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 nod, smile. Anyways, back to the story. This is where it gets crazy. So at this point, the teacher has told the Minecraft kid that, you know, he needs to go to the principal's office right now. And the Minecraft kid is not happy about this at all. And so sure enough, you know, the teacher, let me just paint the picture for you guys. The teacher is sitting down at their desk, at their chair, whatever, right? And the Minecraft kid walks up to go to like the door to leave the class, presumably, right? You know, cause he, you know, he has to go to the principals and whatever, right? So he walks up to the front of the class. At this point, everyone has kind of been paying attention. Noah's like, wow, like this kid, you know, whatever. I mean, if you, the punishment fits the crime, if you're being an idiot, like play stupid games, expect, expect stupid consequences, like it is, or expect stupid prizes. That's the actual phrase, uh, <laughs> my fault. But anyways, right, the Minecraft kid does something absolutely crazy because he walks up to the front of the class and he slows down as soon as he gets to his teacher. And the teacher's like, keep moving. Principal's office is that way. And as soon as the teacher says, keep moving, the principal office is that way, the Minecraft kid runs over to the teacher and the teacher, remember, is sitting down and sitting down at a pretty low desk slash chair. And the Minecraft kid stands like, whips out a chair, puts it down from the teacher. And the teacher is in the middle saying, hey. And the Minecraft kid steps on the chair, turns around and rips the biggest fart you've ever heard in the teacher's face. Like this is the most ridiculous thing Noah has ever seen in his life. And in Noah's head, he was like, hmm, huh, what? Uh, 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 huh? And the, the, the teacher was just as shocked. The teacher's just like in a state of disbelief, also a state of like stink because like, man, the Minecraft kid was eating like mega, like, like, I don't know. He was eating like premium beans for the last seven months before doing this fart, bro. I swear to God, like Noah said he could like legit, like smell it from being like 20 feet away. And the, and then the teacher's like, oh God. And then the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, 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 and then runs away. So the teacher is now steaming mad because he's got this big old fart that was just like landed in his face. This kid is destroying his entire class. So now the Minecraft kid is like, catch me if you can, and starts running around the class. And the teacher 
is so mad right now. Like, the teacher is so angry. So the teacher starts sprinting after the kid. And the Minecraft kid is like, nyang, nyang. it just starts, like, running around the class, pushing over chairs to make it harder for the teacher to get. And the teacher's like, that's it. You're gonna, you're gonna be, ex you're gonna be suspended for so long. You'll be lucky if you don't get expelled. I'm calling up your parents, and I'm writing a full report. And Noah and everyone else in that class was just sitting there with their mouths dropped super, like, his, their mouths dropped dropped open to the floor they were just like what is going on like oh my god like i knew this kid was a little weird but seriously what is going on right now and so the minecraft kid is sprinting around the class kind of doing like so you know like in football where you kind of like psych them out and then you go the other way and the teacher is kind of lumbering around like every second that you're running everything that you're pushing over every like millisecond that you're not like obeying me and going to the principal's office your punishment is increasing by a hundred percent which really doesn't make a lot of sense because there's a cat like you can't really punish someone beyond expelling them so what's like three hundred thousand percent beyond expelled i don't really know you tell me so anyways, right, the, the Minecraft kid's like, nye, 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 and then eventually, right, the Minecraft kid accidentally, like, trips on something. The Minecraft kid falls, and at this point, the teacher has made, made up enough ground to grab the Minecraft kid by the hood of his, by, like, the scruff of his creeper hoodie, and it's like, you uh, uh, are uh, uh, coming with uh, me. And the entire class is so silent as this is the most ridiculous thing they have ever seen in their life. And Noah is just like, oh my God, do I have a, do I have a story to tell my mom? So anyways, the Minecraft kid is being dragged out by his creeper hoodie and all four legs are flailing. He's like, no, no, no. And then like the teacher goes out the door, slams it shut. The entire class is silent. No one's mumbling. You would have thought that people would have been like, wow, wow, that was crazy, guys. I wonder what's... No, nope. It was dead silent. Nobody uttered a word. And because of the silence, they were able to hear very clearly the teacher yell, hey, get back here. And within about 20 seconds of them hearing the teacher yell that, they, they once again see the class door slam open and the Minecraft kid with his like his hair all messed up and his clothes all kind of like ripped up a little bit, runs into the classroom, slams the door shut and then locks it. Because for some reason, this door locks from the inside, which actually I guess that does make sense, but he locks it from the inside. You didn't need a key, you just need to press something. And the Minecraft kid, goes over to the teacher's desk after locking the door, literally takes his foot and kicks off everything, including like a $500 Chromebook, right? And that kind of breaks on the floor. All the books fall over. The teacher's coffee mug flies off the desk and like smashes on the floor. And the Minecraft kid steps on the teacher's chair and then steps on the desk and is like, attention! I mean, dude, he didn't really need to say attention to get their attention because literally everyone was paying attention to this guy at this point. The Minecraft kid goes on to declare himself as the ruler of the class and that he is now the dictator and they must do what he says. And everyone in the class is just like completely silent because they're just so shocked by the chain of events that just happened. And the Minecraft kid says, now as ruler of the class, you must refer, refer to me as Lord. You will not call me by my name. Let's call him Joseph. You will not call me by my name, Joseph. You will only call me by Lord. And everyone in the class is just like, huh? This is bit like, they're just like, what happened in the last seven minutes of this class? How did we get from learning about the quadratic equation to, to this, to having a kid like, fart in the teacher's face, run away from them, close the door, slam all their stuff off the desk, and declare himself ruler of the class. How did we get here? So anyways, right, you know, they're basically held hostage by the Minecraft kid because, you know, sure enough, like, people come to the door, they're slamming on it, they're like, hey, let us in, and the Minecraft kid's like, nobody go! Nobody go to that door! Like, nobody dare do it! And one kid is like, hey, like, I gotta go to the bathroom because at this point... You know, they were kind of like accepting that the Minecraft kid was the de facto ruler, at least for the next like 10 minutes or so. And you know, the Minecraft kid's like, no, 
that's treacherous. You just want to let them in. And the kid's like, dude, no, like, I really got to pee. And Minecraft kid's like, that's too bad. You should have thought of that before I took over. And the kid's like, bro, like, how would I have known that any of this nonsense was going to happen? And Minecraft kid is like, <laughs> too bad, so sad. So at this point, Joseph was sitting in, or Noah, not Joseph, sorry, that's the name I gave the Minecraft kid. At this point, Noah was sitting in class, and he was getting, like, kind of, like, he was getting pretty upset. He just didn't want to deal with, you know, the Minecraft kid anymore. He was like, this kid is a menace, he's totally insane. The thing is, Noah's actually trying to pay attention in class. Like, Noah is trying to, like, get his grade back because he was struggling on the first couple tests, so he was really committing to learning the material. And uh, he was getting kind of angry that he was kind of being robbed of this experience. As funny as he thought it was, he really didn't want to, like, have to deal with this much longer. So Noah was thinking to himself, all right, there are most likely security guards at the door, if not some kind of adult that can help us in this situation. Because for the last couple of minutes or so, people have been slamming on the door, let us in, Minecraft kid, or Joseph, let us in, Joseph. Like, you gotta let us in, man. Your punishment will be worse. Or it will be wor uh, your punishment will be worse the longer this is. And so, you know, at this point, Noah is like, all right, I think I'm just going to make a dash for it. But I got to cover it up so this crazy kid doesn't, like, fart attack me or something. Like, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't want freaking pink eye, bro. Like, that's disgusting. So Noah's like, hey, like, do you mind if I sharpen my pencil? And the Minecraft kid's not the brightest man ever. So he's like, sure, peasant, go ahead. And he's like, wait. No. And then Noah's like, dude, what? He's like, ask me again, but you must refer to me as Lord. And, and Noah in his head is like, all right, this kid freaking sucks, but I'm about to ruin him. So yeah, whatever he wants for his next 30 seconds of rulership. So he's like, my Lord, do you mind if I sharpen my pencil? And the Minecraft kid is like, mm, fine, peasants, go ahead. And like the Minecraft kid is like sitting on the desk and he's kind of made it like a king, like a kind of like a king throne in a sense. And everyone is kind of like whispering to each other, like going on their phones, like trying to like contact people. But sure enough, right, Noah kind of walks up and is very calmly walking towards the, you know, the pencil sharpener, which was on the other side of the room as the door. It was towards the front of the room, which means he didn't have to do a massive sprint, but it was kind of on the other side. So he's walking very slowly to the pencil, to the pencil sharpener. And that's when he's able to look out the door. And sure enough, there are like, he sees the outlines of two pretty big guys. And he's like, all right, these are the security officers. And, uh, you know, as the Minecraft kid is like disciplining someone being like, no, you must refer to me as Lord because they asked a question or something uh, that no one realized that that was his moment. That was his opportunity. So he changes direction incredibly quickly, sprints towards the door. And the Minecraft kid is like, peasant, what are you doing? And at that point, Noah goes to the door, quickly unlocks it, opens it up, steps aside and two big security guards run into the room and they just grab the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, my peasants fight for me. I have been a great ruler. I've been a great king. No. And he's dragged out. And at this point, right, the teacher returns to the classroom, completely out of breath. Her hair is all frizzed up. And she's just like, class, I don't think I have it in me to finish the class today. Uh, I will, like, allow you guys to have recess or break period. I, I will have to monitor you guys, but please don't ask me to do anything. I, I just don't, I don't have the, I don't have the energy or willpower right now. And the entire class was very understanding as this, you know, when you go to teacher school, when you take the final exam, uh, the final exam for being a teacher, there's no final, like, you trick question of like, what do you do if a Minecraft kid farts in your face and then literally starts a coup and takes control of your classroom? That's not on the final exam. That's not in the job description. So everyone was pretty, you know, they're pretty forgiving. What ends up happening, however, is the teacher doesn't like monitor them. The teacher just gets another person to watch after them because the teacher's actually going to the hospital because her eyes and her entire face were feeling weird. What ended up happening was both the teacher ended up getting like, had to go to the hospital and got like pink eye, like a very severe case and got like an eye infection. She's totally fine now apparently, but when the Minecraft kid farted in her face, all these like gross, disgusting germs got in there and it could have been really bad. And because of all the nonsense that the Minecraft kid was doing, he was suspended for two entire weeks 
Honestly, he's lucky that he didn't get expelled, but he was also afterwards, after those two weeks were up, he was invited back to the classroom, and he had to also, during those two weeks, write a paper saying why what he did was wrong and apologize to everyone, and he was forced to read that in front of the entire class, and Noah tells me that it was probably the most awkward experience Click on the video on life. screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today we got a story time of a spoiled kid who thinks his dad actually owns the school. Like his dad is the CEO of the school, owns it, therefore he can do whatever he want and do whatever he wants to other people. Yeah, so uh, this is a pretty crazy story, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, as always. And with that being said, let's just jump right into it. Alright, so at the subscriber school, there's a kid who we're going to call Billy. And uh, Billy was a, was a spoiled kid. He was your standard spoiled rich kid. You already know how it is. And as most spoiled rich kids, his parents literally gave him anything he wanted, which kind of d diluted and destroyed the whole like idea of money, the idea of value, the whole idea that you can't just have everything that you've ever wanted. And also, he's never had to work for anything. I mean, here's the thing. There are parents of like that have a ton of money, but they still make sure to instill the right values in their kids. Like they're still making sure that their kids are getting summer jobs if they want something. They're making sure that they're not paying for everything. And if they are paying for something that it actually makes sense, like, oh, my kid needs to eat. Okay. It's like, oh, my kid wants diamond, I don't know, studded cane or something. I, I don't know, man. Then obviously they wouldn't they wouldn't buy that. But unfortunately, Billy was a spoiled kid and his parents didn't really care. So anyways, right, one day, um, Billy must have been riding back with his dad. And this part of the story is a little hard to tell because obviously the subscriber was not in the car with Billy. But it was just like overheard from different rumors and different people. But basically what happened is Billy, the spoiled kid, was, you know, in the car riding back with his dad. And he was on his phone, I don't know, right, playing some game or something. But he, it's not like he had AirPods in. He wasn't listening to music because he heard what uh you know billy was or billy's dad was saying so billy's dad was on the phone with the principal and they were having some kind of conversation or something i think billy's dad like i don't know like did some stuff for maybe he did do some stuff for the school maybe he gave like donated some something or maybe he volunteered i don't know so billy's dad did have some affiliation with the school however billy the spoiled kid was sitting there and hearing that his dad was talking with the principal somehow came to the conclusion that since his dad was on the phone with the principal he must actually own the school so i don't know what billy's dad said that made him believe that but i think billy's dad must have said something that he wasn't like oh and since i own the school he didn't say something verbatim like that but he must have said something that made sense in context but since billy the spoiled kid didn't hear the whole conversation and also wasn't hearing what the principal was saying, must have misconstrued that whatever was being said was a conversation that confirmed that his dad owned the school and not that his dad was helping out with the school, which is what actually was happening. So right, after that, um, Billy kind of had like a massive ego blow up. And since he's a spoiled kid, he already has a pretty decently big ego for no reason. But now that he believes that his dad actually owns the school, his ego is like 3x what it was before. So the next day, Billy came in with like a newfound sense of confidence. It wasn't as if he wasn't confident before. I think, as I have already said, he was, you know, the spoiled kid. He was pretty confident, right? However, he had this newfound kind of sense of confidence after falsely believing that his dad actually owns the school. Um, so anyways, he comes into class. In the first period class, he has with the subscriber. So he sits down, not right next to the subscriber, but close enough to the subscriber, and um so he's sitting there and the subscriber is listening and this at this point this is a first-hand account since the subscriber sees all of this there's some kid who we're going to call ben that was in between the subscriber and the spoiled kid sitting like if the spoiled kid was on the far left and uh ben was on or the subscribers on the far right ben was in between them so anyways right uh the subscriber overhears billy the spoiled kid drop his pencil right and he looks down and he looks at ben and he's like Pick up that pencil for me right now, peasant. And Ben's like, dude, shut up. And the subscriber's like, do you know who my father... Oh, sorry, the spoiled kid is like, do you know who my father is? Mm. And the subscriber's like, what? Like, no. 
he's your dad. I, I don't know. Remember, at this point, the spoiled kid is convinced uh, his dad owns the school. Therefore, ah, yes, I can be a jerk to anyone I want. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, when Ben heard this, he kind of just rolled his eyes and was like, whatever, man. And the spoiled kid is like, your insubordinance is noted and will be reported to my father. And the subscribers just kind of like, oh, my God, because everyone kind of knew the spoiled kid is kind of being a spoiled entitled kid. But they, this was like a whole new level of just like, wow, really, really like this is just a whole new level of damn, this kid spoiled anyways, though. So, yeah, sure enough, the subscribers come just like, OK, whatever. However, the thing is, things continue to go on and things continue to get worse. And as the days went on, Billy the Spoiled Kid just became more and more unbearable. Like, this kid was becoming an actual pain to just live with. So, uh, yeah, basically the worst was in lunch. Um, so, in lunch one day, or the next, or during that day, he went up to some kid and was, like, demanding, demanding, like, his lunch money. Basically, he was paying, like, it was a toll to the, like, it was, it, it, Billy was set. you know when you go on the road and you have to, like, make those stops if you drive really long? Those, like, those toll booths where you have to pay money to pass through? Uh, basically, the uh, Billy, the spoiled kid, went up to some kid and said, you are now in, and he says his last name, family's property. You must pay the toll. Please give me five, like three or some amount, right? Whatever amount was like this kid's lunch money. And the kid was like, uh, dude, no. He's like, your insubordinance is noted and will be reported to my father. Uh, if you are banned from the school, then uh, don't come crying to me. That's all I'm going to say. And the subscriber overheard this, and he was like, oh my god, this kid is actually the worst. And so the next day, uh, you know, Billy, this the spoiled kid, was uh, walked into the lunchroom, and there was a massive line. The subscriber was about midway through the line. I, I think today it was, you know, some kind of, like, special food day that they all liked. Maybe it's Taco Tuesday. I don't know, man. Uh, anyways, though, so everyone was pretty excited, so the line was pretty long. Usually the line wasn't as bad as this, as kids wouldn't be as, you know, admin of being, like, getting in line, going for seconds, whatever. So when, you know, Billy, the spoiled kid, walked in and saw such a long line, he was like, this shall never do, and he starts walking to the front of the line. The subscriber notices this and is like, ah, oh, no, like, no shot this kid actually thinks he can just waltz on in to the front of the line like no one else is here. But sure enough... You know, the spoiled kid, Billy, starts walking and it tries to cut the entire line. So obviously everyone's like, dude, like, what are you doing? And he says, well, you know, I just thought you guys would want to be on my good side and let me cut the line. So obviously everyone was like, ah, hell no, nah, bro. What are you saying right now? Everyone was just so confused why this kid is like, I think you want me to be on your good side. Like, dude. Why would they care if they're on your good side or on your bad side? Like, I, I doubt that, like, they care any bit about that at all. Anyways, though, but the spoiled kid is like, I think it would be a smart investment for you guys to allow me to cut the line. Because remember, at this point, the spoiled kid is working from a kind of perception that he is truly, like, the ruler of the school. And I don't know why he's acting as if everyone else knows that, too. Like, if he only... Let's say uh, let's say his dad owned the school, and he truly was the ruler of the school. Why did he not know about this until two days ago? And if he didn't know about this until two days ago, why is he acting as if everybody else knows as well? It just literally makes no sense at all. So yeah, everyone is like, uh, screw off, kid. Like, we're not giving you our spot in line. Stop being ridiculous, everything like that. And this spoiled kid, you know, gets super mad and is like, you're all going on the bad list or whatever. And he goes to the back of the line. So yeah, at this point, the spoiled kid shenanigans are not like getting him ahead in any way, but also they're definitely not helping at this end. And they're also starting to get really, really annoying. So anyways, Billy, the spoiled kid, his, uh, his, his attitude slash behavior got worse and worse and just continued being bad. However, this reached a breaking point for the subscriber and everyone else in Billy's class one day. So one day, after weeks and weeks of just utter nonsense coming from Billy, Billy just took it a little bit too far. So during recess, uh, you know, the swings are pretty popular. Um, the swings are kind of like the place to be. And the thing is, it's kind of like first come, first serve. 
And everyone kind of knows, like, all right, you spend five or ten minutes on the swings. If there's obviously some kids waiting around to get on them, just be courteous, be a, a good member of your community, and just, you know, get off the swings and then let them go on, and they'll probably do the same. It's definitely a kind of like, you know, the community is going to watch out for the community. And also, if you were known for hogging the swings, bro, the, the kids on the swings probably aren't going to give them up to you. So it's definitely, like, a big picture. You want to work with your group, whatever. So anyways, one day, someone was on the swings, and the spoiled kid, Billy, wasn't really known for liking to go on the swings, but I guess the day he decided to change things up, and he was going to go on the swings. So he goes over to the swings, and he says, Peasant, get off this wing for your king right now. Honestly, I think if Billy the spoiled kid was nice about it, and maybe said something like, hey man, like, how much longer do you think you want to be on the swings? Like, I think I'm going to want, like, I would personally like to, like, get on there at some point, but just let me know. Um, if he said it like that, I bet he would have had a decent shot actually of being able to get on the swings. But it's the fact that the spoiled kid said, hello, peasant, get off the swings immediately before like I, I, I off with your head or before I just like absolutely just like decimate you in front of the court. Like, bro, what are you talking about right now? Anyways, though, so yeah, sure enough, the kid's like, no. So at this point, uh, some other kids are around. Some of them are waiting for the swings. Some of them just happen to be nearby. And they witness this whole thing go down. And the spoiled kid says, you disrespect my authority? Because he's looking around and seeing that everyone else is noticing this. You will be punished severely. And he walks over and he pushes this kid off the swing. And the kid falls over and, like, hits his head. So he has to go to the school nurse the spoiled kid is, like, in timeout or gets a very light, moderate punishment. But at this point, all the kids kind of, like, get together afterwards and are like, dude, the spoiled kid has gone way too far. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment school down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And also, if you, are use, if you use Spotify and you don't listen to these stories on Spotify, my Spotify is linked, first link in the description, and also the only link in the pinned comment. And finally, up until the summer, we got a little bit of a challenge, a community challenge. It's the binge watch challenge. So uh, basically go down the comment section and comment how many videos you've watched today, how many videos you watched this week, whatever you want to put. Uh, here's some people on screen right now that have done so. Uh, thank you to these people. Thank you to you. And with that being said, let's get back to the story. So anyways, right, Billy has gone too far. The spoiled kid has gone way too far. And everyone at the school is in agreement on that. So yeah, sure enough, they come up with a plan. Uh, they come up with a plan of action to fix what's going on. So anyways, one day at lunch, or the next day at lunch, I should say, they all go up. Billy's sitting at a table alone. He can't eat with the peasants, by the way. He must eat at his own little royal table. But he goes up, they all go to Billy. And they all kind of like surround his table. And Billy looks up and he's like, yes, peasants. Mm. And the subscriber's like, dude, we've all come to agreement. You're acting like a little jerk recently. You got to cut this out or, you know, or in this, in you know, the spoiled kid's like, well, before even the subscriber could say or what they were going to do, the spoiled kid, who was just so shocked because he had never been talked back to before. And he just couldn't possibly imagine that the peasants would be so bold as in to talk back to their superior. You know what I mean? Is this like, oh, my oh, good heavens, like you would talk back to your superior like that. Are you serious right now, guys? Um, so he's just so taken aback and, um, you know, it, it, he's all just like, That's, you guys are making a big mistake. My father owns the school and they're all looking at him and they're just like, dude, your dad doesn't own the school and you just can't boss us around like that. Even if he did, you can't boss us around, but he doesn't. So it's not even, not even if you're bossing us around on something that makes sense. And the spoiled kid just blew up on them. He was so angry that they would question his authority, right? Um, and, and he's just like, <sighs> starts shouting, you're all just jealous of me because my father is rich. I can do whatever I want. And you will always be lesser than me. You must submit. You're better off submitting before I destroy you all. And so everyone around the table is like, oh my god, this kid is so cringe and lame. I didn't know you could be both like that. Uh, so yeah, all the other kids just kind of look at him. And then they looked at each other. And then they nodded. They all nodded at each other because they were all in agreement that action needed to be taken. Yeah, so uh, 
Sure enough, they, they're still at the table, and after, like, the spoiled kid finishes his, like, crazy, explosive, like, freak-out session, he's like, the subscriber says, look, dude, we're all in agreement. So either you're gonna quit, you're gonna cut out with all this, like, peasant talk and trying to cut us in line, bossing us around, and overall just being a jerk to us, and you know what you're doing. You know what you're gonna, if you keep on doing that, we're not gonna allow you to do anything. And the spoiled kid's like, excuse me? And the subscriber's like, yeah, We've basically talked to the entire class. They're not going to let you play Foursquare. They're not going to let you on the swings. They're not going to let you do this during recess. They're not going to let you do that. And basically, the subscriber goes down a whole long list of basically everything at school that was fun. Um, the whole class was going to basically block them. Think of this of like some kind of like blockade or whatever, just as a leverage tool. Loki kind of smart from the subscriber and his friends. And the spoiled kid is like, you guys don't control me. I can do whatever I want. And the subscriber's like, all right, man, like, that's fine with me. You can do whatever you want. Like, that's fine. Like, kind of whatever, man. And the spoiled kid's like, ugh. It doesn't bother me at all. I will have fun all by myself. So sure enough, the subscriber, like, kind of looks at the other kids and kind of gives them a nod. And they all go back to everyone else saying that the spoiled kid was not being cooperative, so to block him from anything fun. So over the next couple of days, the, the spoiled kid is not allowed on the swings. The spoiled kid is not allowed to join them during Foursquare. The spoiled kid is not allowed to do this. No one is talking to the spoiled kid. Basically, hold it, like, basically saying, you're not allowed to have fun here until you stop acting like a jerk. So finally, after a week, the spoiled kid, when no one else is looking, goes up to the subscriber and is like, look. Call off your blockade. I'll stop being a jerk. And the subscriber says, okay, one more thing. So you guys might be thinking, what is that one more thing? And the subscriber's like, I need you to apologize. And the spoiled kid's like, oh my god. Oh my god. I'm oh, sorry. Oh my god. Oh. And the subscriber's like, okay, that's good enough for me. And he says, I'll tell everyone to like quit with the blockade. And the spoiled kid's like, good. Like, fine. I'm sorry. Spoiled kid walks away. Everyone lets the spoiled kid back into doing whatever they're doing. And uh, yeah, sure enough, uh, the spoiled kid was no longer a jerk. He might have still thought his dad owned the school, but he wasn't a jerk about it. If you want to support the channel, click on the video on screen right now. And if you're listening on Spotify, uh, click on another story and peace. Today we got a story of probably the cringiest emo kid on planet Earth. Uh, this is probably one of the craziest stories I've received in a long time. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber who sent in this story, let's call him Logan. So Logan was in the seventh grade when this all went down, and in Logan's class there was an emo guy and an emo girl. Yes, I'm in love with an emo girl type emo girl. Um, uh, and yeah, I'm just gonna call them emo girl and emo guy, because you guys know if I have like a billion names for people, I swap them. And even if I have one name, I've even messed that up once before. My brain is very small. But this all happened one day when the emo girl and the emo guy were at recess together. And basically like Logan had recess for a very long time. I know a lot of people don't have recess past like fifth grade, but Logan had it all the way through ninth grade, which is pretty cool. So basically, right, the emo guy and the emo girl every single day at recess would sit at this bench, which kind of was like close enough to everyone else, but also far enough that they weren't going to like get, I don't know, hit by someone on the swing or have to like interact with people. And basically what they would do is they would sit on the bench together and they would be in each other's arms and they would be like, society, no, no, but they would be like randomly cussing out kids and like literally some kid would walk by, let's call the kid Ben, or Little little Ben over here, little Benny boy, would walk by the emo girl and the emo guy, right? I'm just going to call them the emo couple. And the emo couple would be like, oh, look at that Ben. He's such like a conformer to society. He's such a sheeple. He's the sheep and sheeple, bro. Like, he doesn't understand our suffering. He doesn't understand how society treats us because uh, society hates the emo kids. Uh, and, and Ben would walk by and like he'd be able to hear all this nonsense he'd be like bro I can hear you and they'd be like oh what is that sheepo and sometimes they would just like get really like aggro and cuss people out they'd be like hey Ben and he's like yeah you suck bro and Ben's like 
all right, no one likes you guys. And they're like, eh, society keeps hating on us, bro. Why do you think society hates you so much? If you're sending hate out, you're getting hate back at the end of the day. But this all happened one day when Logan made the mistake of getting too close to the emo guy and the emo girl. So the emo couple was sitting on their little bench, right? And they were just like, shush, as always. And sure enough, you know, Logan, you know, he sees his friends at the tetherball. I don't know if you guys ever played tetherball back in middle school, but that was the most fun game ever. I would legit play it if I had it in my backyard right now. But his friends were over at the tetherball and Logan was walking over. And Logan could either take the long route, having to go around the basketball court, to the tether ball, or he could pass by on the short route, he'd have to pass by the emo bench, as I'm gonna call it, because that's where the emo guy and the emo girl would always sit every single recess and complain about shashade or whatever. And so sure enough, right, Logan just, you know, you know, he just, he doesn't know like the real deal with the emo kid and the emo girl, and he doesn't wanna take the long route. So he decides that he's gonna pass by the emo bench. And he passes by the emo bench, and the emo kid is like, because he gets kind of close to them because, I don't know, he's paying attention. He's just walking. And the emo kid or the emo guy I should specify is like, hey, hey, man, wait a second. And Logan turns around and is like, oh, it's that weird emo looking guy, like whatever. By the way, if you dress emo, I, I really don't care. Like, you can do whatever you want, man. You're good in my book. Just don't act like these kids and we're chilling, bro. But anyways, Logan's like, oh, it's these kids. Like, I know they're kind of weird or whatever. And the emo guy's like, dude... I saw that you were looking at my girl, and Logan's like, bro, what are you talking about? And the emo kid's like, bro, bro, it's obvious. You're in love with my girlfriend. And Logan's like, dude, what, seriously, what are you even talking about? He's like, don't try and deny it, bro. You're only going to get into more trouble from me. And like the emo kid looks over at his girlfriend, and the emo girl's like, oh, you're my big defender against this guy in Shishidi. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. I can't do the story with a straight face. So Logan politely explains to the emo guy that he has no interest in his girlfriend. And he's not saying, oh, she's ugly, lol. He's just like, dude, I was literally just passing by. Why would you think that, like, I have any interest in her? Like, why would I, why would that give off the impression that I want to, like, get with your girl? Like, why, why on earth would that give off that impression? And so the emo guy is starting to realize that he was overreacting and that, you know, Logan was literally just passing by. But the emo guy uh, starts to have come up with a different theory in his head. And he's like, man, wait a minute. Are you calling my girlfriend ugly? And Logan's like, bro, no, like, she's totally fine looking. Like, so, and then he's like, so you want to, you're in love with my girlfriend? And Logan's like, no, bro, I'm not. I'm trying to go play tetherball with my friends. And the emo kid is like, so you disrespected my girl turns over to his girl, gets a little wink, you're hot, beautiful. She's like, oh, so shiny. Oh. And he turns back, <laughs> he turns back around. And he's like, that's it. I don't stand for this type of disrespect and slander against my emo girlfriend because I'm in love with an emo girl. You and I, we're going to fight tomorrow for her honor and respect. And Logan's like, D what? And the emo kid's like, yeah, bro, we're gonna fight. You and me at recess at this time, it's you versus me. I don't want to see you chicken out because I'll find you either way. And Logan's like, all right, bro, whatever. I'm gonna go, go play some tetherball. Logan thought that that was it. Logan thought the emo kid was just being like, I don't know, overreacting just to like impress his girlfriend. But unfortunately, he was wrong. Real quick, comment emo down below if you want to heart on your comment. I'll try and heart as many comments that say emo as possible, as that is the secret word of the day. And by the way, if you really do want to support the channel, uh, binge watch a bunch of my videos. I got playlists, or just watch videos in the recommended from me. It really helps the channel, and please leave a comment telling me that you're doing it so I can personally thank you. Recently, I've also been getting a lot of comments of people saying that they put on my videos to go to sleep, which I don't know if that's an insult or a good thing, but either way, like, here's the thing, man. Watch time is watch time, and it supports the channel, so look, I'm not saying to put on a playlist of my videos, turn the volume down to 1% while you're sleeping to boost the channel, but I'm also not saying to not do that, wink. Anyways, back to the story. 
So anyways, right, the next day rolls around, and Logan doesn't think anything of it. Yes, in the back of his mind, he's thinking about the crazy experience of when he passed the emo kid bench, but he doesn't really think anything of it, and he really doesn't think that the emo guy is going to, I don't know... <laughs> Oh my god, I got hiccups. But he doesn't think the emo kid is actually gonna do anything, man. Like, he's just like, okay, whatever. He's just trying to impress his emo girl. So, like, whatever, bro. Like, it really doesn't matter. And, uh, anyways, the next day rolls around, and it's recess. And sure enough, you know, Logan goes out once again to go to the tetherball, because that's where the boys were at. And he, I mean, he had a great day at tetherball the day before. That is a really fun game. I don't know why I keep bringing it up. I just really enjoyed it as a kid. But anyways, Logan goes over and he's just planning on walking to the tetherball having a good time with his friends but you know who's standing there blocking his way um yeah it's the emo guy and the emo girl is sitting on the bench and she's looking at her emo boyfriend uh right and but the emo boyfriend is standing there and he's like yo do you remember when you disrespected my emo girl and uh logan's like what and the boyfriend takes out like, you know, there's, like, at the Halloween decoration stores, those big, like, foam fake skull swords. It's, like, the big gray swords that are made of foam and super bendy but have, like, the skulls on them or whatever. So the emo kid must have bought one of those or had one of those already because he whips one of those out. And he's just like, it is time to battle, man. And L Logan's just like, bruh, like, what? Uh, man, I'm just... I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to play some tetherball, bro. Like, uh, I don't know about you, but, and he's like, no, you disrespected my emo girl. Like, <laughs> so sure enough, right? The emo kid or the emo guy should be specific is like, and you will pay the price. And he runs in against Logan and he takes the foam sword. He starts like going whap, 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 whap. Just starts like beating him with the with the foam sword. But bro, it's a foam sword. It literally bends on impact. So when he hits him, right, the sword just bends in half, right? It just kind of whaps around. However, he's kind of whapping it pretty hard. He's like pop, 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 pop. So it's like almost like slapping him. And sure enough, Logan's getting kind of little red marks. It's like if someone was like... You know, they're slapping you. I slapped my knee, by the way. Don't be weird. Uh, <laughs> if someone's, like, slapping you, they might leave, like, some red marks. They're not going to do any actual damage, though, unless you're in a professional slapping contest and your head explodes or something. But, yeah, sure enough, the teacher saw that and is like, hey, hey, you there, stop that. And, you know, the emo kid's like, dude, this guy started it first. And the teacher's like, no, 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 I saw the whole thing. You just came up to this kid and you were just slapping him. Go to the principal's office. You have detention for the rest of recess. And the emo kid looks at Logan and is like, this is not over, man. This is not over. A week goes by and nothing happens to Logan. The, I mean, Logan kind of purposely avoids the emo bench. And he does look over and he sees the emo boyfriend and the emo girlfriend all cuddled up, cursing out society, as always, right? And uh, sure enough, right, he just thinks he's done. Uh, Logan thinks he's, he's in the clear, that the emo kid has stopped his nonsense, but no. No, 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 wrong. The emo kid has not stopped his nonsense. It's about to get much worse, believe it or not. So sure enough, a week goes by, and during that week, nothing happens. So Logan literally forgets entirely about the whole emo kid, whatever, disrespecting his emo girl type thing. He just doesn't even, like, think about it. Like, at the end of the day, he's just like, all right, whatever, man. I'm going to go play some tetherball, go hang out with my friends, play some, like, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I don't know, whatever they do at recess. Uh, but... One day, a week later, you know, Logan walks into school and Logan has a couple classes before recess. And Logan is just in the hallway and this big, like, emo looking kid who he has never seen before walks up to him. It's like, hey, I'm the emo kid's cousin and I'm gonna beat you up. And Logan's like, oh my god. Because this kid was massive. The emo kid was kind of built like me, like a spooky, scary skeleton. But this emo kid, bro, he was like, he was like, I don't know. He was like a linebacker for like, I don't know, the Patriots, dude. He was a big guy. He was big guy for sure. And uh, Logan, uh, you know, Logan was pretty medium sized, but he was about to get obliterated by this guy if he actually did do anything. So Logan's like, what? 
And the in the emo kid's cousin, who is also emo, he's like the emo. I'm just gonna call him the emo cousin, right? The emo cousin, who is super big, comes up to him, is like, "You, me, boxing." <laughs> Logan's like, "Bro, am I supposed to be Logan Paul? Like boxing, huh?" But sure enough, the emo kid's cousin is like, "Yeah, you, me, recess, boxing." This is for disrespecting my cousin's girlfriend. And he gives him a little shove. And Logan, like, feels the vibrations through his body as he kind of stumbles back a little bit. Kind of sizes it up and realizes, oh my god, this is not gonna end well. So Logan is kind of struggling to pay attention in class because he's kind of thinking about, you know, what's gonna happen at recess. This big guy, the big emo cousin guy, said he was wanted to box him, whatever that even meant. But he was a little scared. I mean, he didn't think he was going to do that well if he actually did end up boxing this guy. Just because this guy was big and he was kind of medium big or he was kind of medium small, to be honest. So he was like, all right, man, I'm not going to do so hot. And Logan really knew that he was in trouble when he walked out, like kind of like because he walks out of the building to go to recess as he's trying to avoid the whole thing and maybe hang out with his friends instead. And normally people are kind of like, I don't know, dispersed around, some are at the swing, some are playing basketball, some are at the tetherball, some are at the emo bench, you know, whatever, right? But at this point, they were all huddled around. And when Logan walked out, they all turned to look at him. And Logan just knew at that point on that things were about to be, they were about to be pretty bad, if he's being honest. So Logan kind of just walks out there, and the crowd that's kind of circled around that was looking at him kind of steps to the side to show the emo girl, the emo guy, and the emo guy's big emo cousin all standing there. Apparently, word got out that there was going to be a big boxing match or whatever. And here's the thing, right? Stuff like this never happens at Logan's school. So when people heard that this was potentially going to happen, everyone was like, all right, man, the basketball, the tetherball, the, I don't know, the swinging, that can all be on hold because that can happen any day. But a boxing match between this kid and this big, like, emo guy who's like, doesn't even go here. This is not something that happens every single day. So sure enough, right, they were tuning in. They wanted to see what happened. And the emo kid is like, or the emo guy is like, oh my god, Logan, are you ready to get on for disrespecting my girlfriend, my emo girl? And Logan's like, bro, like, I didn't even say anything. And the cousin's like, yeah, you're just saying that because you're scared. Scared. Everyone's like, <laughs> okay, not everyone was laughing. It was literally just the emo kids. But at the end of the day, right, everyone was still watching. And so the, uh, you know, anyways, uh, the emo guy, like, has, like, takes out his backpack, who, which, because, like, normally you didn't bring your backpack to recess, but for some reason, the emo guy brought his backpack to recess. So, you know, that was a little confusing. And yeah, so sure enough, you know, he opens up his backpack and he takes out two pairs of boxing gloves. And Logan's just like, oh, so, so we're actually, so we're actually doing this. Oh, okay. So this is actually something that's good. Oh, oh, mm, mm, okay. Huh? So Logan like starts to put on the boxing gloves and is kind of like in his head, what am I doing if I go along with this? I'm going to get like, I'm going to get destroyed. So Logan, midway through putting on the boxing gloves is like, wait, I didn't agree to do this. He starts taking out the boxing gloves and the emo cousin is like, well, then I'm going to fight you either way. If we do this officially, it'll be a fair fight. If you try and run away like a little weasel rat boy, then I'm just going to come after you either way. So you got no choice. And at this point, Logan, like, is actually really concerned. Like, the whole thing was kind of a joke, and it was becoming less and less of a joke up to this point. But at that moment, he realized kind of how serious the situation is. Just a little word of advice for me. Don't get into any, like, fights at school. Just uh, please, for the love of God, avoid all that stuff like the plague. If it's happening, just report it. Just get away from that stuff. But anyways, Logan's like, oh, God, like, this is really bad and he was starting to get pretty nervous and that's when kind of his that's kind of when like his guardian angel came in a sense because this uh, uh, the school principal two teachers and six security guards the entire security guard force at the school came in people started dispersing they started running away the teachers pointed at all three of the emo kids they also pointed at Logan and the security guards kind of like 
didn't like apprehend them. They didn't like tase them and tackle them to the ground or anything. But they're kind of like, you four, you got to come with me. And the emo kid's cousin's like, I don't even go here. And the security guard's like, yeah, you still got to come with us. And he's like, no, I don't. And they're like, we'll legit call the police on you if you try and leave. Like, don't even try. He's like, okay, whatever, man. So sure enough, all four of them, they were sent to the principal's office. And the principal and all the security guards were sitting around, kind of sat them down, and kind of just wanted an explanation of what happened. So the emo kids explained from their perspective, and then Logan explained from his perspective, and obviously his perspective is the perspective I just told. And apparently the emo kids' perspective was the same thing, but a little bit more dramatic of, like, Logan disrespecting the girlfriend or whatever. But honestly, the stories were practically the same, which is a little weird. Like, why would the emo kids say exactly what was happening when obviously they were in the wrong apparently they didn't realize how dumb they were being but uh yeah sure enough the principal's like wow that's insane so you might be thinking to yourself how on earth did they get an entire like security task force and all the teachers and the principals together when they were only out there for like five minutes well apparently since word spread of this quote-unquote boxing match that word spread like it spread to the principal and they took it very seriously so they had an entire team ready and they were monitoring the situation very closely to see if anything was going to happen and obviously if some kid comes from out of school to like try and attack another student of of course, they're going to have an issue with that. So what happened was Logan, since he was totally like in the right, you know, he was set free. He was totally fine. But the and so was the emo girl because she was kind of just a bystander, even if she did cheer it on. You could say the same for Logan for not standing up earlier. So those two were totally fine. But the emo guy, he was suspended for an entire week since he kind of orchestrated the whole thing. And the emo cousin, like, the emo cousin couldn't be suspended or expelled because he didn't go to the school. But basically what happens is they ended up actually calling the legitimate police about this whole thing, explaining what happened, and the police ordered kind of like a semi-restraining order. I don't know if it was super official, but basically it said if this big emo cousin ever stepped foot on the school again, he would be, like, trespassing, and the police would have their rights to come and arrest him or whatever. So, yeah. What even happened? <laughs> That's what I'm asking myself Click on the right video now. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today I got a story of probably one of the craziest emo kids of all time, and I've told a lot of crazy stories, so strap in. Uh, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber, uh, let's call her Luna. So Luna was a tennis player and was pretty good at tennis, and over the summer, her mom sent Luna to a tennis camp, and this story starts pretty far through the tennis camp. So the tennis camp lasted about one week long, and on the last day, which was Friday, all the parents would come and they would watch kind of like a tennis tournament of all the kids who were playing and learning how to play and getting better during the week. There would be a big tournament. They would have like, I don't know, a fake little trophy thing. But the main important thing was that there was a big tournament at the end of the week and all the parents came to watch. So this story starts on that Thursday. So this is the day before the last day, which is the big event. And and uh, this, this uh, tennis camp took place at a college, so they had access to a college dining hall. And Luna and her two friends were walking, you know, to go try and find a table. And Luna's two friends said, oh, look over there. Or one of Luna's friends said, oh, look over there. There's a table. So Luna's two other friends, you know, went over and sat down at the table. Luna said, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get something. So Luna walks over to the dining hall grabs something to eat, and is walking back. And while Luna's walking back, she's not really paying attention. Like, she's kind of like, I don't know, spacing out or looking on her phone, or for some reason, she's not paying full attention to her surroundings. So unfortunately, she bumps into this guy. And, you know, the guy had a tray of food, and the food, honestly, it wasn't even that bad. Like, the food... Sure, like a little bit got on his shirt, um, but it wasn't like the entire tray exploded all over his shirt and his clothes were soiled and ruined beyond repair. Like, yeah, dude, you got sprayed a little bit. That sucks, but it's time to move on. And Luna was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. That's so embarrassing. And like, she's like, like, I'm so sorry. Like I wasn't paying attention. And this kid, you know, Luna's looking at this kid, and this kid is very clearly like an emo kid. And by the way, there's nothing wrong if you dress like goth or emo or whatever. It's a style, and I think a lot of my viewers have the style, and I don't personally do it myself. That isn't my style, but I rock with you if you do that. No hard feelings. However, if you're like this emo kid, bro, you, you got to change some things in your life. That's all I'm saying, because this emo kid looks at Luna, looks her dead in the eyes, and then takes out a book. And Luna's like, eh, what? 
And the emo kid, so he has this book in his hand, and Luna notices that there's, like, ancient hylog- uh, like hy- hylogryphics? Hy- Dude, my brain is not working right now. There's, like, ancient, like, letters and all these, like, symbols on the book. Basically, it looks like, like, a wizard or witch book or something. And Luna's thinking to herself, all right, there's no shot that, like, that's actually, like, a wizard book or something. And the emo kid reaches into his back pocket and takes out a wand. So he opens up the, like, the spell book, and he's waving his wand around. He's like, you have made a great enemy you have made a great mistake bumping into me on purpose. And Luna's like, it wasn't on purpose, man. Like, I swear to you, like, I wasn't paying attention and I apologize for that. I should have been paying attention. You're right. Like, that's on me. However, like, come on now. It was an accident. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what kind of nonsense doobly doop you're doing right now. But and he's like, silence, mortal. And he's like waving his wand around. He's like, hibbity bibbity bobbity boo. I put a sp- something like super goofy, but like supposedly like I don't know wizard tongue or something. He's like beepity boop, beepity I'm like okay, bro. Like let's calm down now. And he's like there, you've been cursed. And he slams the book shut with one hand, puts the wand back in his pocket, puts the book back into his backpack which he was carrying around, or I guess not a backpack. I guess it was like a tennis bag with a racket in it. And the emo kid walks off. And Luna is just standing there, just kind of like, what? <laughs> what just happened? Like, can we just have, like, a little pause and a rewind of what just happened here? Because I don't think that, like, I really understood what was going on, because there's not a shot that that actually just happened. So Luna goes back to the table with her two friends, and her two friends are like, what took you so long? And Luna's like, well, I actually have a very interesting answer that I bet you guys were not expecting. So Luna tells them the story, and they're like, one of them, one of them was just like, oh my God, that's crazy. The other one was like, dude, like, I know that kid. Like, I saw, I, I was in a tennis group earlier this morning. We we're practicing forehands. I know that kid. He was so weird, bro. He was all like, Sisha. okay, he did. Okay, he wasn't like the other emo kid, bro. I, I'm just playing around. But he was like, all like in the corner, hushed away. And when the coach like, yeah, like said to him, it was his turn. He kind of like looked up at him and flicked his long, dark hair back kind of sighed and then like you know hit a forehand or something and they're like that kid was super weird but i had no idea that he was like that weird because there's a difference between being kind of weird and putting spells on people randomly like that's just who two different ballparks bro quick comment emo down below if you want to harden your comment that is the secret word of the day and i will do my best to heart as many comments as possible i'm still getting over some complications with the uh the the wisdom teeth and that might take a couple days so please don't take it personally if i don't heart your comment do know i still really appreciate it and also shout out to all the people who've been binge watching my videos like going through and watching a ton of them either via the playlist or just through the recommended please let me know in the comment section when you're doing this so i can heart it and say thank you and just know that you're supporting the channel more than you can even imagine at this point i really appreciate it back to the story it gets crazy Anyways, right, so the next day rolls around, and remember that, you know, Luna was at a tennis camp, and on the last day, which was the next day, because this whole spell incident happened on a Thursday, and the last day was on a Friday. So it was Friday, it was the last day, and it was only like a half day, because the parents would come and pick you up by the end of it, but anyways, right, there was a big tennis tournament, and all the parents came to watch. So it was a pretty big deal. And so everyone was sitting around on the tennis court, um, and like the coach was standing at the very front. Everyone was sitting on the tennis court, and he was reading off his list of like, all right, guys, like, thank you for all your hard work this week. And finally, it pays off. Just know that, you know, win or lose, like, you know, we just want to make sure you have a fun time and that, you know, I mean, there can only be one winner, so you, you, you can't take it that personally if you don't win. Uh, the most important thing is to like, good sportsmanship, and have a fun time. And anyways, let me read off the pairings. So the pairings were read off, and Luna had a first-round match where she played against another, some random guy or something, and she was better. She was probably one of the top 10 people at the camp. She didn't expect to win the tournament. I mean, the, the other people, there are, were some people that were much better than her, and maybe they're having a bad day or whatever, but Luna just wanted to you know, go out there, have some fun. So Luna's first-round match went down really well. She won 6-2, 6-3, which is pretty solid win if you guys know tennis. I used to play tennis a lot back in the day. That's why I can tell this story so well, um, at least the tennis parts. Uh, but anyways, 
things get really interesting when Luno goes into her second round match. The second round match is against a familiar character that you guys may or may not remember from earlier in the story. Yes, Luna is playing the emo kid. And let me just say that Luna did not forget the emo kid, but very well the converse is true too, because the emo kid had not forgotten about Luna either. Which means, yes, Luna and versus the emo kid are about to play after the emo kid put a spell on her. And uh, Luna's just looking at her opponent like, there's no way, there's, there's no way, man. There's no way. So anyways, right, you know, Luna, so uh, when, when you play tennis, you normally, like, you will warm up with your partner and then you'll get into playing. But basically, you both stand on two sides of a net, just very quickly for people who don't know. And so Luna was standing on one side of the, the net and the emo kid was, like, sulking over and kind of, like, was all hunched over and kind of, like, wandered over to the other side of the net. And so Luna walks up to kind of, like, the net in, in between and the, the emo kid walks up as well. And Luna's like, all right, like, do you want to warm up? And the emo kid is like, heh heh <laughs> Insert maniacal laugh. I can't do a maniacal laugh right now. I'm just, I just can't do it. So insert, like, the most evil maniacal laugh from, like, TV shows and movies you can think of. And dude, out of all the responses Luna was expecting, okay, Luna was either respond, expecting, like, yes or no. It was a yes or no question. But out of all the responses that Luna was expecting, let me just say that mani a maniacal laugh was not on the list, dude. Like, it just was not on the list. And so Luna's kind of thinking like, uh, okay. And then the emo kid goes on to say, huh, like finishes up his maniacal laugh and is like, why would I need to warm up when I have the curse on my side? And Luna was just like, oh, so, so we're still going with that. We're not just going to like, because Luna was kind of thinking, all right, well, let's just put yesterday behind us because that was very weird. You know what? Luna, Luna gave this guy you know, the privilege of allowing, you know, just to put that behind them. Because normally that's not a thing you just put behind, right? The fact that, like, you got a spell put on you, normally you don't just forget about that. But Luna was like, oh, okay, so no warm-up? And the emo kid said, yeah, well, I mean, I have the curse on my side, so why would I need to warm up anyways? And Luna was like, all right, fine, I really got to smack this kid. So Luna and the emo kid kind of go immediately into playing the match, and so Luna spins the racket, and sure enough, it is the emo kid's choice. So basically, in the beginning of tennis, you spin like heads or tails, and if you get it right, you can choose to serve or have the other person serve. And the emo kid starts maniacally laughing. So once again, insert the like maniacal evil villain laugh after the racket is spun, and, uh, you know, Luna's just kind of looking at him like, dude, what? And the emo kid is like, looks like my curse is already working. <laughs> Insert again, another maniacal laugh. And Luna's just thinking to herself, all right, bro, like, let's not jump to conclusions. There's a 50-50 chance that you were going to get that. Like, come on now. In the back of Luna's mind, she was like, uh, well... I wonder if the curse is real, but her rational mind was able to take control and be like, all right, let's just smack this kid. I know I'm better than him. So sure enough, right, you know, the emo kid starts serving. Basically, that's the way you start a tennis point. So the emo kid throws it up, bops it in, and the serve is not that good. I'm, serve is the hardest part of tennis, in my opinion, but the serve is not that good. And Luna, really wanting to have a good impression to kind of quote unquote break the curse, winds up a massive forehand, completely crunches it, and obliterates the emo kid in the first point. Like this ball is blazing off of Luna's racket and just smack right past the emo kid. The emo kid wasn't even like the curse was the emo kid plus the curse were not good enough to give him the reaction time to be able to deal with it. That's how bad this whole thing was, dude. So Luna looks up at the emo kid, giving her the dirtiest look ever, because I don't think the emo kid realized that Luna was one of the top players at the uh, at the tennis camp, but he now he now realized that, you know, he was probably not going to win this. I think he walked in with a lot of current confidence, also trying to scare her off because of like he remembered, oh, this is the girl I put the curse on. Odds are he would have like, if this was a different person, he would have put a curse on them beforehand. Like he would have walked up to the tennis net, whipped out his magic wand and been like, blah, 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 you're now cursed or something just to mess with their head. But since he's, he's already done that, right? He was trying to like, he was trying to use that as leverage. But anyways, the match continues and the emo kid is getting destroyed. 
So at this point, the emo kid is down about 3-0, and they're only playing one set. Basically, in tennis, you play six, like, you play to six games. Whoever gets the six games first by win by two wins, and if you get to 6-6, six, six, uh, you play a tiebreaker. But anyways, right, Luna's up 3-0, so absolutely smoking the emo kid. And it's Luna's serve, and she serves it in, and it is very clearly a winning shot. However, it was close, right? It wasn't like, it was clearly in, but it wasn't like in by so far that like you'd have to be like crazy to say that it was out, right? And the emo kid was like out. Because if you don't know, uh, you, you make your own calls when you play tennis. There's no umpire unless you're really good. And this was a lower level. I think in the final match, like the final match of their big tournament, they might have like someone like officiating it. But the emo kid was like out, and Luna kind of looked at him like, no, dude, that wasn't, but like she can't really do anything. So they keep playing, right? And uh, Luna continues to crush this kid, con 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 continues to crush this fool, bro. Like, and the, e the emo kid continues to cheat. However, the emo kid is really only cheating when it's like, uh, I don't know, kind of close. So if like Luna hits a really good shot, but it's kind of close, the emo kid will just call it out. And this is super frustrating to Luna because she's losing a lot more points than she needs to, but she's still winning. It's currently 5-1. So if Luna wins one more game, then it's over, right? She wins the match and like it's done with the emo kid. And at this point, right, I think other matches were kind of like getting on with and like there were like more people were finishing. So parents were kind of like coming over and they were watching and like more of the staff officials decide to watch this game just because less matches were being played because more people were winning and losing and kind of less matches were going on. So at this point, right, it was like 5-1 Luna and there were a bunch of people watching at this point. And so Luna hits a shot that is very clearly a forehand winner. She hits it, smacks it. It's not even like the other ones that is kind of close. This one was so clearly in, it was in by like two or three feet. And the emo kid is like, uh, that was out by the way. And Luna's like, dude, like I've been letting you have some really close calls recently, but that was so clearly in, I don't know how else to say it. Like I give you the benefit of the doubt of all the other stuff. But that one was so clearly in, I can't let it stand. Luna basically slips and she's like, nah, I'm done, bro. And the emo kid starts getting mad. And he's like, hey, like you must respect my authority for point calling. And I guess technically you do. But then again, like one of the camp people was watching the whole thing go down. And he started to pay more attention. So he's watching the emo kid. And the emo kid is getting so angry. So once again, they start another point. The emo kid takes that point, even though he's obviously losing, right? And Luna hits another shot, and the emo kid, it's not even that Luna's shot was good, the emo kid just shanks it into the net, like he completely misses it. And the emo kid was like, oh, by the way, your shot was so out, and it was so clearly in. And Luna's like, dude, you can't just call everything out when you lose. And at this point, the emo kid said, uh-uh, like, I'm gonna do what I want, because it's my authority, and you have to deal with it. And at this point, right, the camp counselor had kind of noticed what was going on and was like, I, right, I, right, I got to come in here. I got to put a stop to this. So the camp counselor, you know, starts to walk on the court and is like, what's going on, guys? And the emo kid is so angry at this point because he's losing and he's just mad. And what? oh, my God, this is where the emo kid snaps. So the camp counselor is walking over to the emo kid and is like, all right, can you explain what's going on here? Like, it looked like that point was very clearly in. Why did you call it out? And when the, when the camp counselor says to the emo kid that it was clearly in and asked him, kind of questioned his call, the emo kid, already super salty and already molding super hard, being super angry already, just completely loses it. And he takes his racket and he goes, Rah! and he whips around and he smashes it into the camp counselor. And, like, the camp counselor stumbles back, and it's like, oh, my God. Because, like, the racket had hit his arm. It had, like, broken the skin a little bit, so it was a little bloody. And he, it wasn't that bad. He didn't break anything. He didn't, like, hit a major artery or something. But the racket smashed into the camp counselor and, like, kind of, like, broke into his skin. So the camp counselor starts yelling, like, 
are you crazy? Like, why would you do that? I was literally asking about a call and you attacked me. And there was another camp counselor watching the whole thing and he starts walking in. But before they could do anything, you see this woman with a long, with kind of like a kind of like a side part, like it kind of like the Karen haircut. Maybe she was a nice woman, but I'm just describing what I was told. By the way, the story was sent into my Instagram. Go ahead and follow me there. It's in the description. Even if you don't want to send in the story, just follow me there. It makes me feel good. But anyways, this woman walks on the court. She kind of looks like a Karen. Maybe she's super nice. I'm just saying it how it is, right? Walks on, grabs the emo kid by the back of his, by like the scruff of his shirt and drags him away. And he's like, ma'am. He's like, he's like ma'am, I was winning. The emo kid literally had the audacity as he was being dragged off court for attacking one of the camp counselors to say that he was winning. What? Yeah, so the, the other camp counselor, I mean, the one that got hit with the rackets, like, uh, I got to get this checked up. Like, I think I'm fine, but, like, I just want to make sure that, like, it didn't break anything farther because his skin was kind of bloodied up. And the other camp counselor, the one that was not attacked by the emo kid, walked up and said, hey, Luna, like, sorry you had to deal with that. Uh, we're giving you the win, obviously. And so sure enough, Luna went on. Luna didn't win the tournament, but, you know, did pretty well. And the emo kid was nowhere to be seen after he's dragged off by his mom. Presumably, his mom was like, all right, like, like, we're done. Grabbed him and just dragged him off. Click on the video dude. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today I got a story of probably one of the craziest emo kid encounters I've told on this channel, and that is quite a that is quite a statement considering what I've told. So strap in, subscribe if you like story videos, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted the story via my Instagram account. Let's call him James. So this all happened one day when James and his friends were at the skate park. So at the skate park. Sorry, I can't speak apparently. So James and his friends were big kind of like fans of like casually skating or whatever. They weren't necessarily skater kids or whatever or skater boys or whatever that song was, right? But they did enjoy a bit of like, you know, skating at the skate park. Uh, that was never something I really did, but it did look kind of fun. It was kind of how they got their exercise. It was what they did for fun on the weekends. And this all happened one day, and it kind of just seemed like it was going to be a normal day, as all these stories really tend to start with. But, you know, anyways, James and his friends went over to the skate park, and they were just doing what they were doing. They were kind of just hanging out very casually, just kind of like skating on the rink that was the, like designated to skate on, right? And this group of, like, emo kids walked over, and James kind of knew most of the people in his neighborhood, but obviously he was, a, he was in a place that had, like, an, enough people that James still was, like, aware that there was a ton of people he didn't know. So, you know, when the people were walking over, James in the back of his head's like, I don't recognize these guys, but should I? Did I, like, meet them, like, at an event or something? Or I, it, did they go to, like, one of my friend's, like, schools or something? Or did I meet them at one time because they're walking towards me? Normally when a group of people are walking towards you or someone's walking towards you, it, it's normally because, like, they know you and they're trying to talk to you. Or, uh, or option two is they, they're looking for trouble, which uh, this happens to be option two. So anyways, James kind of stops skating and his friends stop skating too. And they kind of congregate around and they're, you know, the emo kids are walking up and they're like, hey, what's good? And in the back of James' mind's like, oh, maybe they want to share the park. That's totally chill. Like, we always love like skating with new people, right? And the emo kid walks up and there's like three or four of them, right? Let's just say four, given an even number. But let's call the main emo kid the emo kid. And I'm going to call the other guys the emo minions. Because there's like a main, in this story, there's a main leader of the pack who I'm going to call the emo kid. And then three other emo kids that are kind of just like kind of minions. They kind of just do what the main guy says. And they kind of just follow him around. So I'm just going to call them the minions. I'm going to say minion one, minion two, and minion three. So anyways, the, minion, uh, the emo kid who's the main guy, the leader of the pack, you know, he goes up. He's like, hey. And James is like, yo, what's good, dude? And James's friends kind of like look around like, bro, what's going on? And the emo kid was like, yo, bro, I just wanted to let you know that this skate park, bro, this is our turf. And they're like, emo, uh, minion, emo minion number one 
was like a girl and she had like super long dark hair bangs. So like you couldn't actually see her face or anything. And she just swooped her hair to the side and like shrugged over. Emo minion kid number two had like a spike collar on. By the way, like if you dress emo or do all that emo stuff, I really don't care as long as you don't act like these kids. You're legit cool in my book. I just want to let you know. E emo minion number two is the spike collar and literally like growls at James and he's like, bro, what? So James very calmly says, hey man, like, this is a public park. I don't know what you mean by your turf, but like, we come here legitimately every single weekend and we never see you here. And the emo kid's like, well, we come here every single weekday. So James and his friends were still like in high school. They were actually seniors in high school. And I guess like the emo kids either dropped out or just were no longer in school. And for some reason could come during the weekdays, which... Isn't that when, like, you know, you have a job or something or you go to school? But whatever, right? He's like, oh, okay, well, uh, we normally come here on the weekends, which is why we're here. It's like, we are totally fine sharing the park with you. You guys don't seem that bad. Like, we will make space. And James's head, he's like, nah, these guys do seem that bad. I'm just not trying to be that guy who says that. And the main emo kid is like, bro, I don't know how else to spell it more clearly. So I'm just going to spell it for you. And James is like, bro, this kid's a little weird. And the emo kid's like, all right, this is my T-O-R-F. And in James's head, he's like, this is your TORF, bro? This is your freaking TORF? What are you even, whatever, right? And, and then the emo kid's, yeah, this is my TORF, T-O-R-F. And you are not allowed on here. You're not chilling with us. And James in his head is like, bro, I swear to God, this is a public park. You guys are the least, like, gangster, this is my turf, or, or I'm gonna shank you with my tears and sadness and all black apparel. Like, what are you gonna do, bro? And the emo kid's like, bro, like, this is, we're gonna give you a warning. You guys better leave. You have five minutes to pack up and leave. And when we're back, if you're still here, there's gonna be some problems because this is our turf, T-O-R-F. And James is holding back his laughter, bro. He's like, in his head, he's like, say it, say Torf. And James is like, no, I can't say Torf. Say Torf, do it. He's like, oh man, I didn't know this was your Torf. Uh, I mean, Turf. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. We come here every weekend. I just don't think that's very fair. And the emo kid's like, well, we'll see what you're thinking in five minutes when me and the crew come back. And he's like, yeah, guys, let's roll. So all three of the minions, the uh, the long, like the, the super bang one, the dog, the, the dog color bark one, and the other one who's pretty normal. Well, I mean, no, but comparatively, yes. They all roll out and uh, James turns around to his friends and it's just like, dude, like, I don't want to go anywhere. Like, because the thing is, if it's like if we get, if we submit to his demands, right? If we submit to his demands, they're just gonna come back and they're just like, if we ever want to use this again, they're gonna say, "Well, this is our turf, and you gotta go." And I don't think we should stand for this. So James's friends were like, "Bro, like I'm not trying to have any problems. What if they try and fight us or something?" And James is like, "Well, maybe that's a risk we gotta take. If I mean, this is something we do every weekend. Do we really want to give it up because a bunch of weirdos are coming in and saying like this is their tour for whatever? Kid couldn't kid couldn't spell as well. But anyways, probably why he's not in school right now. Uh, you know, James's friends are kind of laughing a little bit, and they're like, you know what? Yeah, we will stay. So sure enough, James's friends stay there for the next five minutes, and you know, James looks over." Five minutes later, you know, no one's really showing up, but about 10 minutes later, the emo kids show up again. And James is like, all right, you know what? We're just gonna keep going what we're going. And James yells over and says, hey man, like there's some space if you guys wanna come like skate or whatever. And the emo kids literally just stare at them and then turn around and walk away. And James is like, oh, that was pretty easy. The problem here is that James was lulled into a false sense of security because no, it was not that easy and no, the whole, sh the whole shenanigans were not over yet because James and his friends eventually, you know, they get tired and they want to go back home. So they pick up their boards and they start, you know, they put them in their backpacks or some of them carry them over, whatever, and they get all their stuff and they start walking the direction of their homes. And this is when they realize that, you know, uh, well, James didn't realize until, you know, he's talking with his friends and one of his friends is like, hey, James, like, not to alarm you, not to startle you or anything, but nonchalantly, like very discreetly, look back behind you. And so James kind of like stops to tie his shoe really quick 
and takes a peek behind him. And the four emo kids were walking on the other side of the street, glaring at them. And James is like, all right, well, this might be a coincidence because they apparently live in the area too, but I'm not sure if I want them to know where we live. Do you guys want to take a pit stop at the mall? And all of James's friends were like, yeah, bro, that sounds good. Let's go ahead and do that. And so James and his friends, they start walking to the mall. And the thing about the mall was it wasn't a straight shot from where they were walking. They needed to do a few turns or whatever. And they do the few turns and they walk to the mall and sure enough, the emo kids are behind them, but this time they've actually made some ground. And James is like, all right, these kids either are also wanting to go to the mall or they've been stalking us and they're making ground. I can't totally decide what, I'm about 50-50 in my head right now. And his friends are like, bro, these kids are weird. I wouldn't put it past them if they were like legitimately trying to stalk us or something. So James and his friends were like, all right, well, let's go to the mall and let's like weave around a lot. Let's go to one store, hop over to another store, and if we lose them, like if they actually are following us, then they're following us. But no way they follow us exact if they're not intentionally following us, the odds that they accidentally hop around from store to store as randomly and as quickly as we're about to do is pretty close to zero. So we'll figure out pretty quickly if they're actually following us. And if they are, then we'll just hop around or hide somewhere or just do it more intensely so that we lose them. So James and his friends are in the mall and they're kind of starting to weave around and they notice that the emo kids have also entered the mall and so they very clearly enter one store and the emo kids and the other minions, right, enter the store as well. And so James and his friends are like, all right, evasive maneuvers, right? And so sure enough, they're just, they're weaving around, they're hopping from store to store and, but they're also giving enough of an intention to show like the emo kids like where they're going just to test that they're actually following them. Because if they're actually following them on purpose, they'll, you know, they'll need to like see where they're going. And if they're all, if they are following them, they're probably, their plan is to hide. And uh, after about the fifth store that they hop to super quickly, cause like there, no one's really gonna go in a store for like one second and walk out. They're not gonna do that like five times in a row. On the fifth store of like hopping in and hopping out, James turns to his friend and says, yeah, okay, the emo kids are very clearly following us and I have no idea what they want. Real quick, comment emo down below if you want to harden your comment. That will be the secret word of the day. And we're nearing it on 600,000 subscribers. And if you want to help me get there faster, there's two things you can do. First thing is binge watch some videos on the channel. Either watch a playlist after this or watch some more videos or any way, just watch more of the videos in one sitting. And the second way is tell a friend that you might think that will like the videos and uh, tell them about the channel and ask them to subscribe. Uh, comment down below if you do any of that stuff like the people on screen right now, and I will heart your comment and say thank you because I really appreciate it. Anyways, back to the story as it's about to get pretty good. So anyways, James is like, all right, we gotta find a store that we can easily hide in. So they continue going store to store, being followed and trailed by the emo kids. And they're noticing that the emo kids are starting to get a little bit of ground. And if the emo kids get too much ground, it's gonna be nearly impossible to hide. So what they do is they go into a clothing store with a bunch of racks of clothes, like really thick racks of clothing, right? And they have sweatshirts and sweaters, and they find, they're like looking around, they're like, okay, maybe there's a place in here. And uh, sure enough, there's a big, massive couch, maybe for people to sit on, to try putting on shoes or whatever. But the thing is, right, the couch is big enough and there's a space behind the couch that is large enough and the couch is long enough for them all to quickly hide behind. So James, the moment he sees it, points it behind the couch and says, everyone behind there now, quickly, it's our, probably our only chance. So they all hop behind there and they just have to be as quiet as possible. So they're listening and they hear the ambiance of the store, you know, the little uh, music in the background, people coming in and out. And what they can see is under the, uh, under the couch, there's a bit of a space so you can see. And they see people walking by, they see, but you can't see the person, you can only see like their feet, right? And that's when they see four pairs of black Air Force Ones with black Nike socks walk by. And they're just like, Oh my God, they don't say anything. Like one of James's friends kind of like opens his mouth and James looks at him and kind of puts his finger up to his mouth being like, shh, don't say anything, right? And uh, sure enough, right, uh, they walk by and they stop at the couch. And James's heart just kind of drops. They're like, oh my God, they know that we're here. How do they know it? And James in his head is thinking like, okay, if they actually know that we're here, we need to run. But if not, like we got to stay put. 
So James decides not to run or anything, and sure enough, the emo kids were just, like, looking at something, and they eventually walk by, and they uh, walk out of the store. I mean, James assumes that because he gives them enough time. He's like, all right, they probably think that they just lost us or whatever. So James and his friends get up, and they get out from behind the couch, and they kind of, like, sneakily sneak around. Sneakily sneak. Nice words, Connor. You speak English great. Nice. Anyways, they kind of, like, sneak around the store and very cautiously look behind corners until they come to the conclusion that the store is empty and the emo kids are gone. So James and his friends are like, hey, man, like, we're still at the mall. Like, if we want to still go to some places. And James is like, I don't know, man. I'm really just trying to go home. And this is where they make one of their greatest mistakes. Because one of James's friends, as they're walking out of the mall, they pass by a hot topic. And James's friend's like, oh, bro, there's one of the shirts in there I want to get. Do you mind if I just quickly, like, swoop in and grab it? And James is like, mm, I don't know, I really want to get out of here. But he's like, yeah, whatever, like, that's totally fine. Uh, little did they know that a hot topic is truly the turf of the emos, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, though, but it, it happened to be a very, very poor choice of a store to go into, because all of James, James, his friend that wanted the shirt, and the other two walk into the store, and uh, sure enough, they walk in, and James's friend's like, oh, I think I see the shirt, and as the thing is, like, the shirt's pretty deep into the store, so they all walk pretty deep into the store, and they hear the voice, well, 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 look who we have here, and they turn around, and the emo kid and the three emo minions are standing there, looking all super smug. And they're like, well, you've disrespected our turf on the skate park, and now you've decided to come to our home and desecrate it and steal from it and pillage it. And the, 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 one of uh, James's friends like, dude, I just wanted to buy a shirt. He's like, silence! And he's like, oh, oh, okay. And the emo kid's like, now you will pay the price. And the emo kid takes a black sweatshirt and starts whipping it around in his head. He's like, prepare for the emo attack. And he starts whipping the sweatshirt around faster and faster and faster and faster. And James is kind of looking at him like, bro, what are you doing? And that's when James feels this kind of like this bah, just on his face. Ow, I actually slapped my face for that. Like and subscribe for the pain I just felt. Uh, but anyways, Boom! Across his face. He gets whipped in the front of the face with, a like, this random, like, sweatshirt. He's like, ow! Like, bro, what are you doing? And this was the emo kid's biggest mistake. Because the manager of Hot Topic walks out. He's like, what are you kids doing? He's like, you four or you eight, because it's four and four. Get, get out of my store. Like, if you're going to be, like, messing around with my clothing and fighting each other, get out of here. Do that outside. And emo kids are like, no! Not Hot Topic! No! This is our home! And the manager's like, guys, stop being dramatic, get out of here. So they all walk out, and the emo kids are like, You have not only kicked us out of our turf, you've kicked us out of our home. And now that we have nowhere to go, the only place to run is after you! And James looks at his friends, he's like, boys, we gotta go. So James's friends are legitimately not being stalked, not being power walked, not being like lightly jogged. They are being sprint. They are being sprinted against. All the emo kids are sprinting after James and his friends, running out of the mall. And James's friends are just like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" So they run out of the, out of the front of the wall, uh, out of the front of the wall, out of the front of the mall. They're running down. And they're just, like, running, like, kind of down the street. And James's friend's like, like, uh, do, like, what do we do? Do we, like, uh, like, James, what do we do? And James is like, I don't know. I don't know. They're weird. They're strange. They're angry. And then they keep running. And one of James's friends like, James, stop running. James is like, no. And he's like, stop. And so everyone stops running for a second. And they turn around. And they see the emo kids just sitting on the steps of the mall. Like, they were chasing after them out of the building. But apparently, as soon as they came out of the building, they're just like, nah, dude. So sure enough, James stops. He's like, all right, I think they're not coming after us anymore. Let's just go farther before we go in the directions of our house and stay vigilant. Make sure that they didn't like hop into a car to follow us or something or are waiting for a ride. But no, sure enough, they all get back home safely. And uh, this happened about like a year ago last summer, or at least a subscriber who submitted this to me on Instagram, go follow me there, told me and said he's not, he's not even seen these kids ever since, which is good. And he's gone to the skate park every week ever since this happened, so no, he was not scared away. Uh, moral of this story is, uh, dude, what even is the moral Click on the this, video bro? on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. 
Today I got a story time for you guys about probably one of the weirdest, strangest emo kids to ever exist. So yeah, I don't know, get something to eat, get comfortable, subscribe if you're new, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted the story, let's call her Claire. So this takes place during Claire's class, right? She During school, she was in class, and there's this boy that Claire was talking to, and she, you know, she kind of liked him, right? Hey man, it, 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 it happens, you know, life happens. Let's call this guy Ben, because... I'm, I'm not creative, man. There's also another girl in Claire's class, and we're just gonna call her the emo girl. And Claire didn't know this at the time, but she really did know this. <laughs> she really got to know this pretty soon, but at the time, she didn't know that the emo girl had a massive crush on Ben, right? And part of me feels for the emo girl a little bit, like, I've definitely been in situations where in middle school I had a crush on this girl and she was obviously talking to another guy that like, you know, would have definitely gotten her. Like, that I, I was not the one for her, some other guy was. It sucks, man. It really does. I'm not going to say it doesn't. However, it doesn't justify the actions that you'll see in this video, which are pretty crazy. But anyways, right, so this all started one day when Claire was talking to Ben. And she was sitting there, you know, she's talking to Ben, and it kind of seemed like Ben was going to like her back and he was very engaged talking to her, like they were flirting a lot. And this is when, you know, Claire like kind of like spaced out a little bit. You know when you're like looking at someone and then you kind of space out a little bit and you look at all the stuff behind them when your like uh, focus of vision kind of changes and shifts? So she kind of like spaced out a little bit and looked behind Ben and she very briefly made eye contact with this emo girl in her class. If you dress emo, this video is not against you. I think the style is totally fine and I like you either way. As long as you don't act like this emo girl, then you're totally fine. So basically, right, this girl had super long, dyed black hair. She was like a natural, like a brunette, like a year ago, but then she dyed it all black. She wears all these like goth skull rings or whatever. And it's kind of the style, you know what I mean? And sure enough, this emo girl that Claire doesn't really talk to just because they were never really friends is just staring into like the pits of her souls, dude. Like the, the pits of her souls. Staring into like the, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. She, They were just like deeply staring at her. Very, very kind of like angrily. And Claire quickly breaks eye contact because like, I don't know, man, she's not trying to like, uh, she's just like, I'm not engaging with this. Like, let's hope that's a coincidence. Claire completely forgets about that and goes back to talking with Ben, right? And so sure enough, you know, she's talking to Ben. She's like, mm, flirting, whatever, right? Insert flirtatious uh, conversation. And by the end of the conversation, you know, the bell rings or whatever. And Claire leaves to go to either recess, lunch, another class. I don't know specifically what, but whatever it was, she leaves to go and do it. And the emo girl quickly follows behind her. Like, the emo girl was kind of far behind her in class, so the emo girl is, like, speed walking towards her. And Claire is kind of thinking, oh boy, uh, I guess that eye contact earlier today was not an accident. It was not, like, an, a mistake. Uh, you know how you sometimes, like, I, I know I'll do this. I'll, like, space out and not even pay attention and then realize I've been staring at someone for, like, five minutes. And I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I swear, I'm just zoning out. And Claire was kind of hoping that the emo girl just happened to be accidentally staring into her soul through her pupils. But, uh, yeah, it was not an accident because the emo girl walks up to her is like, hey, we got to talk. And Claire's like, um, okay. And the emo girl is like, I don't know if you know this, but Ben, Ben is mine. He is my boyfriend, and I don't want to see you start talking to him. And Claire is really taken aback because at first she's like, oh, wait, is Ben dating someone? Like, I've talked to all my friends, and I'm pretty sure, like, I, because, like, Claire made sure beforehand that, you know, Ben wasn't dating anyone, so she could kind of, like, show that she was interested and not get rejected or whatever. And uh, she was pretty sure that he wasn't dating anyone, and also, if he was to date someone, Claire didn't really think that the emo girl was his type, but she was like, oh, so you're dating him. And the emo girl is like, well, not yet. But he's mine! Don't question my authority on this matter. You will, you will suffer the consequences if you want to steal my boyfriend away from me. And Claire's just like, uh, wh what do you mean your boyfriend? Are, so you guys are dating or aren't dating? She's like, well, not yet, but, like, super soon. Like, it's totally happening. And the thing is, Claire, you're just getting in the way of this. You're getting in the way of what is meant to be. 
I was performing a spell last night, and in my cauldron, I got, like, the spirits told me that Ben and I are meant to be together. And if you want to get in the way of spirits and magic, well, then, oh, by, my, by all means, like, go ahead and curse yourself. But I'm just letting you know that if you get in between Ben and I becoming boyfriend and girlfriend and soon to be husband and wife forever, then you will regret it. And the emo girl kind of like hunches over and like shuffles away. And Claire was just stunned, uh, to say the least. She was kind of just at a loss for words at this point because it's not every day that, you know, you're walking around and, uh, you know, the emo girl in your class, if you have one, comes up to you and says that, yeah, by the way, the gods of magic literally said that, you know, that guy that you're talking to, that he and I are meant to be together and that we are actually boyfriend and girlfriend even though we aren't, so stay away, bro, and then shuffle away. That's just not a, you know, a day-to-day -day occurrence. I don't know, but maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But uh, sure enough, you know, Claire kind of was like, okay, well, I'm not going to be bullied out of talking to this guy that I like. Like, I'm not going to be bullied out of it, man. Like, that's just not, that's just not going to happen, you know what I mean? And Claire's like, you know what, I, I think I'm just going to, you know, keep talking to this guy. I think I just am. So the next day rolls around, and the only class that Claire has with Ben is the class that she has with the emo girl. So it's not like Claire could really talk to Ben a lot in other classes. However, Claire does talk to him every kind of like lunch break. They get lunch together, and the emo girl doesn't eat lunch in the uh, lunch room, so I don't think she knows, or if she does, she's not trying to see that. Fair enough, I guess. But sure enough, you know, Claire, you know, Ben comes over to Claire because they kind of were talking every single day. I don't think the I don't think the emo girl's ever spoken to Ben before, but they're about to they're about to be boyfriend and girlfriend guys. Stop hating. <laughs> no, but uh so Ben comes over just like every other day and Claire was a little bit weird and Ben's like, "Are you good?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, actually it's nothing. Sorry. I was just I was just spacing out." In reality, Claire was like, "Okay. <laughs> this will be interesting cuz she notices the emo girl is intensely, intensely staring at her, right? Just looking at her so angrily. And uh, as Ben walks over and when Ben sits down, her brow furrows and her like, she like lifts up her hand and like crunches it into a fist of rage. Like that Arthur meme where it's like his, his fist is all balled up. Like, so, so Claire was distracted by that, obviously. And uh, she was like, oh no, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just spacing out. So Claire and Ben, you know, they continue to talk and, you know, they, they, they flirt a lot as always, you know, it kind of, Claire's kind of getting a feeling that, you know, Ben's going to try and make a move at some point kind of soon, just by kind of the natural progression over the last couple weeks. And, you know, Claire's all for that, man. I mean, she was kind of like trying to put herself out there so that Ben would, uh, Ben would hopefully come around and, you know, ask her out or something. Sure enough, you know, the bell rings again and Claire is kind of like power walks out of there. She grabs her bag quickly. She's like, aha, Ben, I'll see you in the next one because Ben and her go to totally different directions. So it's not like she can walk with Ben. And so Claire is like power walking out of there because she's like, all right, emo girl is coming for me, man. Like I, I, because Claire wasn't looking at the emo girl, but she could just feel it. Like she had kind of like the raid boss music going on. She's like, oh man, I got to get out of here, dude. Final boss encroaching, encroaching, man. Like I, I, I got to get out of here. So she grabs her backpack, quickly like puts it on her shoulder and starts to like sprint out, not sprint out of the classroom, man. Her teacher would have been like, stop running, stop it, stop. But sure enough, right now, the emo girl was just as fast and just as intent to be talking to Claire. And she comes up to Claire. She's like, you didn't heed my warning. You didn't listen to me. And Claire goes, dude, I don't know you, but it doesn't seem like you and Ben ever talk. I don't think you're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, you, you threatening me with your magic powers or whatever is not going to make me stop talking to this guy, dude. Like, can you go away? And the emo girl is like, fine, but just know that I will give you one last warning. And Claire's like, oh boy, kind of rolls her eyes or whatever. And the emo girl's like, if I see you talking with him again, it is on sight. And, and Claire's like, bro, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? And the emo girl's all like, stop laughing at me! It's not funny. It's serious. I will give you one last chance. 
And this is your final opportunity to cease your terrible behavior. Or you, yes you, Claire, will suffer the consequences. And Claire's just like, oh my god, you, you can't, you, you gotta be kidding me, dude. Like, there's, there's no chance. So she's like, okay, uh, thanks for talking to me. Uh, is that all? And the middle girl's like, yes. One last chance. Don't forget it. Don't you forget it. One last chance. And once again, emo girl scuffles off. Little spoiler, uh, Claire does not listen to the emo girl. In the next day in class, the emo girl does something completely crazy. But real quick, comment emo down below if you want to harden your comment, as that is the secret word of the day, and I will try and heart your comment to say thank you. And also, if you want to support the channel, binge watch videos, or just watch a bunch of videos after this one, or in your free time, when you're drawing, about to go to bed, playing video games, go watch one of the playlists. I got Emo Kid playlist, Spoil Kid playlist, and if you do, comment down below so I can personally say thank you, as it really does help. And also, uh, Profile Pick Army looking strong. So you thought that that was it for the craziness from this emo girl that going up and threatening that the evil gods of spells and magic and wizardry will, she will suffer the consequences. You thought that that was bad. And no, 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 no. Pause, bro. You're not even close to what's about to happen because the next day it rolls around. Okay. I keep saying that like that's something crazy. Oh no. The next day happens. Time is linear. Raw. But anyways, right. Next day rolls around. Claire goes into class. And she makes sure that she's talking to Ben. And she makes sure that the emo kid, it, or the emo girl specifically, is seeing this. And Claire is kind of like a little bit upset because she's like, you know what? This girl is bossing me around. I'm not standing for it. So Claire decides that, you know, she's just going to make a move. Like, she's going to make a move. Um, so anyways, Claire is talking with Ben. And, you know, she sees that the emo girl is at an angle where she can see both of them pretty clearly. And so Claire looks at the emo kid in the emo girl in the eyes. This is a little mean, I'm not gonna lie. However, it is kind of justified since the emo girl was like threatening to pull up or square up or like it's on site if you talk to him or talking crazy or whatever. So this is a little bit justified, not saying it's not mean, but you know, uh, uh, Claire is kind of like, oh, Ben, like tell me about you or whatever. And what Claire does is she puts her hand on like a Ben's leg or whatever, kind of like as an indication of like, I like you. Uh, uh, don't go ahead and do this. I, especially like you got to ask people first. Like you can't go around just putting your hands on people, bro. As the Connor Pugs endorsement, don't, don't do this. But anyways, like, I mean, she was, she already talked it like she, either way she does it. And Ben reciprocates very nicely back and Ben kind of like puts his hand on her chair, right? You know, when you're like in the movie, the classic movie theater scene where it's like you reach your hand behind them to like, uh, I don't know, you know what I'm talking about. And this, the emo girl legitimately snaps, dude. She freaking snaps. And you're, in that, you're, you're probably thinking she's gonna go up and put a spell on them or she's gonna like go raw and like sprint to the bathroom to have explosive diarrhea. No, none of those things are true. You know what this girl does when she said it's on site? She meant it because Claire one moment was like kind of relaxing in the company of her soon to be boyfriend, spoiler, Ben. In the next moment, she was on the ground. Do you know why? Because the emo girl freaking tackled her, dude. The emo girl was got so angry at the sight of them, like, basically, uh, they weren't holding hands, but they were, like, same level of, like, romantic intimacy as holding hands. She was so mad at that sight that the emo girl legitimately got up out of her seat, buckled her head down, sprinted like a D1 quarterback, and knocked Claire out of, like, tackled Claire, basically, and was, like, and started hissing. So right now, Claire's on the ground. The emo girl is on top of her. Ben is sitting there in complete shock, like, what, what, what? And everyone in the class turns around, including the teacher. Um... Because they were supposed to be, like, reading a book or something in pairs. They were n None of this nonsense was supposed to be going down. So the teacher is just like, what's going on over here? And the emo girl is, like, is like hissing the entire time. He's like, I told you it was on site. Stay away from my boyfriend. And Ben is just so confused. And Claire's like, covering her face because the emo girl is, like, 
very faintly, but still trying to, like, claw at her. It's like, don't, 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 like, with their big, like, uh, you know, kind of like in Pokemon, like, Meow, Meowth, or I forgot the cat Pokemon that, like, Team Rocket has. You know how that, like, it has scratch attack that does, like, negative one damage? That was kind of the equivalent of what, like, this the emo girl was doing to Claire. So no damage was done, but it was very strange. And uh, sure enough, you know, Claire, the next moment feels the sensation of the emo girl leaving her body, like being picked up. So she opens her eyes and she sees the emo girl is literally dra being dragged away by the teacher and dragged out of the classroom. And Claire gets up and Ben looks at her with just, just this look of, huh? And uh, at this point, Claire's like, Ben, I got some explaining to you. I got some explaining to do. And Claire explains everything that I just told you Click guys. on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Imagine being so spoiled, so entitled, and such a brat that your parents literally disown you. This is what happened to the spoiled kid in today's story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Brian. Yes, we're bringing the names back. Don't worry. Anyways, there was a spoiled kid in Brian's life. This is a bit of a longer story. I've been bringing these back. I know you guys enjoy them. But anyways, right, so there's a spoiled kid in Brian's life that was, you know, a very, very interesting character. He was notorious around the neighborhood. So there was, like, one super nice house in the neighborhood, and obviously the spoiled kid lived there. And, uh, you know, he's, he only lived there, like, for a third of the year because his parents had, like, crazy expensive houses all around the world in different countries and different states. But while he was there, while he was in the neighborhood, he was an absolute menace. And the kids really knew him because for the majority of the time, middle school, high school, he lived... So he lived in the neighborhood during the years of, like, or not, during the time that he'd be going to school. So he was never there during the summer or winter breaks or something like that. But his parents liked the school district, so they sent him to school there. So anyways, the kids in the neighborhood, including the subscriber Brian, just slowly over time got, like, uh, they, they just kind of got, like, uh, used to him. They were aware of him, and everyone kind of knew his antics. However, as Brian got older, he became kind of more and more aware of, you know, how much money he had access to and kind of the stuff like that. And some people with age, some spoiled kids as they get older, become less spoiled as they kind of become more socially aware of the fact that, you know, in all reality, it was kind of luck based that you were born into this. So you should really act as if like super grateful and super, it's fine that you have it. Like at the end of the day, some people have it, some people don't. And if you have it, I feel like as long as you act like, you know, nice enough and you don't, you're, you're kind of not showy with it, you don't brag about it, you don't use it, uh, you know, I don't know, in the wrong way, then I don't really have an issue with you. So some kids, as they get older, they start as little kids who are spoiled and then they kind of, you know, they grow out of it. But others, like this spoiled kid, kind of uh, grew into it in a sense. He was always kind of known as being a bit jerky and a bit like showy, especially when he was just showing off things that he, uh, he didn't get himself. But it got really bad the older he got. So this is a pretty long story of the road to him getting kicked out from his parents' house and them legally trying to disown him. It's a, it's a, it's a doozy of a story, but it all starts one night, right? So at this point, the subscriber and his friends are actually done with high school. It is the summer that they graduate. So actually, you know, uh, it's it, it, for once too, for once, the spoiled kid is actually being staying in the neighborhood for the summer. Maybe later on, he's a trip to somewhere else. But for the first time, it is a summer when the spoiled kid is going to be interacting with the other kids. So Brian, the subscriber, is kind of just prepared for whatever is going to be thrown his way. Um, but he's also excited because it is, you know, it's finally, to, they graduate. They're going off to college. This is going to be the last hurrah he's going to have with his friends who he's known ever since he was a little kid. Most of the people who went to the middle school and the uh, high school, he's known forever and they live in their neighborhoods. So he'd hang out with them all the time. So this was kind of like the last, the last kind of thing. This was the last kind of push before they go off and start their lives or whatever. So this all started one Friday night. And the spoiled kid kind of like pulled up to an event where they were a little kind of gathering, you know, Brian and his friends were having. And, uh, you know, he pulled up in a really fancy, expensive car, right? So Brian had a car, but it was like, 
super cheap car, whatever, which honestly, I think your starter car should be extremely cheap. Not so cheap that it's dangerous, but cheap enough that, you know, you, you have the ability to kind of mess around with it a bit. I don't have a car yet, but I know when I will get one, I'll make sure that it won't be some, I, I won't go, I, I definitely, first of all, don't buy it used or do buy it used, don't buy it new. And cheap cars function. As long as they're not going to blow up in your face, they function. If the brake works, the car is good enough for me. Anyways, though, he pulls up in this super crazy expensive car, which is kind of expected for someone like, you know, the, the spoiled kid, right? And he pulls up and he's just talking about how like, he, he's just like extra, extra arrogant. I think the kid like was kind of more vacant. Like he didn't really hang, the thing is, right? The kid never really hung out with the, uh, the other kids in the neighborhood during high school, just because, you know, he was off doing his own thing. He would hop in a class, kind of be a jerk then. And obviously, you know, during the summer, he wouldn't be there and he wouldn't hang out with them on the weekends because he was too busy doing his rich kid things, right? But he decided to pull, th uh, pull up to this event. He just came in in the super crazy expensive car. And uh, people are kind of just looking at him as he kind of like walks around, kind of being buddy-buddy with everyone as if he was super close friends with them. Brian, the subscriber, and the other people didn't really care too much because, you know, I mean, ugh, they're not going to be mean to this kid. This kid isn't great, but during this party, right, it was getting a little bit late. This kid was starting to get a little bit drunk and, or, or Apple. Okay, I'm just going to say drunk. YouTube doesn't actually care that much. Um, and uh, yeah, sure enough, right, the kid starts to brag. He starts to brag a lot about how he's got the craziest whip ever, how he's got access to all these things, how everyone else has to be like worker drones and go into like work a nine to five and then have like one minute of retirement and then die while he gets to be like have this crazy awesome life. And people were starting to get a little bit resentful because unfortunately that may or may not be true. The truth is that this kid probably doesn't have to work or so he thought until he literally got disowned which is coming up. And trust me, it's worth it. I'm really trying to build a good picture of the spoiled kid so that there's a good payoff when he gets disowned at the very end of the story. Or yeah. So anyways, right. At this point, you know, the spoiled kid's like, all right, I'm going back to my house. And uh, yeah, this kid had a lot to, had, a, had enough to drink where they were like, dude, you can't drive. Cause like, obviously disclaimer, one of the worst things you can do is, you know, have something to drink and then drive, get an Uber, stay at a friend's house or have a DD. Okay. Little, just a little thing from the channel. If I can spread a little bit of uh, good knowledge, I'll do that. But anyways, this kid doesn't ignores everyone. No one was able to get his keys. He gets in the car and literally crashes into the first tree. People go over to make sure he's okay. He is miraculously totally fine, but some, something that isn't totally fine, but is very totaled is the car. Yeah, completely destroys the car. The car is totaled. It's, it's not a good situation. Uh, the spoiled kid actually has to end up calling his parents. His parents drive over. They're very clearly not happy because, you know, their son was, you know, drinking and then got in their car. They're not his car, their car, right? Wrecked it. They're happy that he's okay. But obviously, they're not happy about the fact that, like, a $100,000 car is completely totaled. Not going to be great for the insurance, right? So sure enough, right, you might be thinking, okay, well, spoiled kid crashes a car. Does he really get disowned from that? No, no, no. This is a long long, long list of things that the spoiled kid has done. Because he doesn't stop at totaling one car. The spoiled kid ends up totaling another car. Anyway, so you might be thinking another party and he gets in again. Nope. This is literally the next day. So the next day, you know, the subscriber and his friend is kind of walking around at the mall and uh, they're kind of walking out to the parking lot. I think they're going to get in the, into their cars to do something else. So it's a subscriber. It's some of the subscribers friends. And I don't know, something like that. And uh, so sure enough, right, the, you know, the subscriber, he, you know, is kind of like walking around and he sees a pretty fancy car pull up into the, uh, the driveway or the parking lot of the mall. And once again, you know, the parking lot of the mall, the car pulls up and actually instead of going into a parking spot, pulls up, idles behind them and rolls the window down. Sure enough, it is the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid, um, you know, kind of is once again in another car. In literally any other family situation, I can almost guarantee you that the spoiled kid would not have access to a vehicle literally one day after totaling the car before. But since his parents had a bajillion dollars and probably infinite cars, they, they kind of just gave him another car because they're like, we don't want this kid around the house anyways. So sure enough, the spoiled kid is driving around in his new car and he, he kind of like pulls down the window. He's like, it's good, guys. And they're like, oh. 
like you you got access to another car so fast like that's pretty crazy loki trying to throw a little bit of shade at him but you know completely goes over to this kid's head he's like yeah this whip is actually nicer than my last one and then he goes on to be like as, as you can see this is a model s124 7x5 i don't know i don't know much about cars just talking about how nice the car is right and you know the subscriber and his friends kind of just sitting there kind of just looking at each other like okay man that's real nice and all but we do not care and uh so sure enough the kid's like yeah so i don't know if you know any like banging chicks around here don't forget to let them know that i'm gonna i have a super sweet ride and we'll take them and give them the time of their lives peace bros rolls down the window and literally drives off into the back of another car and totals this car again the subscriber is just sitting there and just tr shocked by the fact that the kid literally within five seconds of rolling up his window from bragging for two minutes straight about his new car after literally just crashing his old car, within five seconds, just slams into the back of another car, totals his car, which he's once again completely fine. And I don't even know how you totaled your car slamming into the back of another car, but this kid is just so incredibly good at wrecking his own car. Okay, my mistake. I was about to say wrecking his own cars. No, no, no. He is incredible. He is. He should go into the professional leagues of wrecking your parents' cars, because that is what he is incredible at, apparently. So sure enough, right, Spoiled Kid gets out. He's like, ah, oh, man, you're in my way. Like, you have to get out of my way. And like, the other guy was literally in a parking spot. Uh, the, the guy was still in his car. Thankfully, he was good, too. He was parked in a parking spot, and he gets out. And he's like, you rear-ended me, but you didn't just rear-end me. You rear-ended me when I was in a parking spot. Like, how am I in your way if I'm in a parking spot? And the spoiled kid's like, well, you should have seen that I was coming and got out of the way. Obviously, the spoiled kid is clearly wrong in the situation. And the spoiled kid calls his parents because when the guy's like, what's your insurance? Like, let's trade insurance or whatever and starts taking photos. Spoiled kid's like, what's insurance? So he has to call his parents. His parents come over and his parents are very not happy because, uh, yeah, after their son drunkenly crashed their car the night before, they give him another a seemingly even more expensive car, which is low-key on them for that much trust, and he crashes into some guy who's parked in a parking lot? Like, dude, how do you even crash into a stationary car that's parked in the parking lot and end up totaling the car? I mean, it's just crazy enough that he crashed into a stationary car in the first place, but dude, what? Yeah, so anyways, the parents are very much not happy. And from that point on, he drives, uh, they give him a less, a significantly less expensive car. It's still, like, really good. It's still, like, $20,000, which is an insane amount for a car, but it's nothing that, like, the spoiled kid would want to flex. This spoiled kid would only flex a car that is $100,000 or more, because anything less than $100,000 on a car is a brokey car. Obviously not. Like, as I said earlier, if the brake works, it's a car, in my opinion. But, yeah, the spoiled kid would not be flexing his, oh, my God, it's only a Tesla. <laughs> I'm so poor right now. Yeah, that's the spoiled kid's mentality. So he, while he was still able to drive around a lot, yeah, um, he wasn't able to, uh, was not able to flex it. However, you might be thinking, oh, the parents disowned him just over, you know, breaking a few cars. Like, sure, the kid's a menace, but really disowning him? Like, kicking him out and all that? No, no, no. The story continues. This kid gets worse. So this kid keeps on showing up to these parties, right? And the thing is, you know, he, it's not only just these parties. This kid just, like, appears around the town a ton. And, the, you know, the kid shows up, doesn't flex his car too much, but shows up in his car, just kind of, like, appears places where people are, either that being during the day or at night, if there's a party or something. This kid just kind of, like, appears places, which is kind of weird, but, you know, they, uh, they kind of just don't question it. And uh, the thing is, though, this kid was super egotistical, and he also was, like, super aggressive. Like, he was kind of crazy, dude. So, like, he would, like, just randomly get into fights with people. And at parties, it was a little bit easier to just be, like, you know, kick the two people out. Even if he just, like, fought someone, like, randomly. I don't know. Like, they'd still kick the person out as well who he fought. Which, just to, like, mitigate the whole thing. Just to, like, cool it down or whatever. So, whenever the spoiled kid came up to have, like, showed up at a party or something... There was like a one in five, there, no, there's a one in three chance that he was going to get kicked out because he tried to fight someone. 
But the real problem started when he just started fighting people in broad daylight. So yeah, one day at the mall, this was about like a week, two, one or two weeks after the whole he crashed two cars in like the span of 24 hours incident, the subscriber was hanging out with a friend at the mall, right? And for some reason, the spoiled kid was just walking around there. And for some reason, this kid had beef with his friend. Uh, you know, the subscriber doesn't totally know what his friend did, but his friend, after the fact, was like, dude, like, I think he asked for a test answer his junior year, and I just didn't give it to him. But, like, other than that, I can't think of anything else he'd have, like, beef with me about. So, basically, the spoiled kid was so petty that he was, he was willing to hold beef with someone because they didn't give him test answers back in junior year. I mean, this is the spoiled kid we're talking about, so it's not like I'm, like, wow, blown away or anything. It's kind of expected. But anyways, right, at the, at the same time, so the, spo the subscriber and his friend is kind of walking through the mall. The spoiled kid sees him, and the spoiled kid literally just, like, out of, like, nowhere, basically jumps on this kid and just starts swinging on, swinging on him. And it's, it's ridiculous, too. And the thing is that's funny is the spoiled kid decided to do this in front of the mall cop. So, yeah, the spoiled kid just starts swinging on this kid. This kid obviously isn't going to, like, well, it's not obviously not going to fight back. But he knows that he has a better chance of just kind of like trying to like avoid the confrontation entirely. So he kind of backs out, especially he sees that there's a mall cop right there. I think, you know, the subscriber's friend had a bit more spatial awareness than the spoiled kid did. Because the spoiled kid probably wouldn't have just like charged on him like head first if he knew that a, like a mall cop is literally 10 feet away. But uh, sure enough, right, the subscriber... You know, it's just watching as this all happens, and the mall cop almost, like, immediately, like, 25 seconds in, jumps in, breaks them up, and uh, puts the spoiled kid uh, under arrest. I mean, as much as a mall cop really can. He calls the actual police, because, like, this, I don't know, he, he, I guess he didn't have a lot to do. And so, you know, he asks the, the subscriber and, the, and the, his friend to stick around. Eventually, the police show up. The police, you know, the, the mall cop gives, you know, his eyewitness or whatever you know he's interviewed what and eventually the parents are called and the way that the mall cop and the police agree to let this kid go is uh, it's a little shady but the parents like if they choke up enough money yeah so i guess the town they lived in was low-key a little bit corrupt because the cops were telling the parents like look these are if you hand us a thousand dollars this won't go on anyone's records or anything like that and you know the parents were pretty upset about this and, uh, you know, my, you might be thinking, okay, crashed a few cars, got in one fight. No, no, one fight? There's literally four to five other, like, occurrences that I was told, and I was implied that there was a lot more. But there was, I will quickly run through them. I'm not going to spend too much time on each because that'd be a little ridiculous, right? One time at an ice cream shop, uh, one of the subscriber's friends was getting ice cream when the spoiled kid came in and apparently just didn't like his fit. He said it wasn't drippy enough, so tried to punch him in the face. Once again, the cops are called, and it's the same cops that, like, are around the entire, like, neighborhood or whatever, or the town. So the parents, once again, have to pay them off $1,000. The next one happens at the movie theater. So, uh, you know, the spoiled kid wanted to sit with uh, these three guys that went to school with the subscriber and lived in the neighborhood. But there was only three, like, seats left in the row, so the spoiled kid said, I want to sit in between. But the three kids sat down and said, hey, man, you can sit behind us. So the spoiled kid literally grabs the kid in the middle and, like picks him up by the collar of her shirt and, like, pushes him out and then starts just, like, wailing on the kid. Once again, the police come. Uh, once again, another $1,000 down the drain. Another, yeah, this kid's insane. Another instance, right? And remember, this kid is only doing it again and again because he genuinely believes no matter what he does, he can get away with anything. I'm just going to tell you one more of these because at some point they all kind of sound the same. But anyways, <laughs> this literally just happened. They were walking down the street. The spoiled kid saw some kid that he, like, remembered was, like, I don't know, kind of weird in uh, freshman year, but like had totally changed by then. It was like, you're weird in freshman year. It just socks him in the face. Like it, the most ridiculous stuff ever. Once again, the police come over and they're just like, call up the parents. They're like, do you want to just like Venmo me $1,000 at this point to make it easier? So yeah, a lot of corruption is going down in the city, but at the same time, at this, the thing we're supposed to be focusing on is every single time this happens, the parents are getting more and more and more upset. And apparently every single time this is happening, they are screaming at the kid. It's not as if they're like, okay, then. At the end of the day, they keep paying the fines, which honestly, they probably should have just let their son go to jail for a night or two. Would have been a lot more effective than just getting him out and paying, him a th paying the cops $1,000 and yelling at the spoiled kid, because pretty clearly yelling at the spoiled kid was not functional. 
And the thing that, the okay, we've made it to that part of the story where I tell you the thing that really drove them over the line to disown the kid and kick him out. So remember, this is accumulation of everything, of everything. And if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. Real quick, we're bringing back the secret word of the day. So anyways, the subscriber and has a friend. We're going to call this friend Will. And Will, a night before, was at a party that the spoiled kid was at. And the spoiled kid had a girlfriend. This girlfriend, he like legitimately like flew in from Dubai like, he messaged some, like, Instagram model on, like, he just, like, DM'd some Instagram model on Instagram, paid for her flight, said, I'm gonna, like, bring you all these, like, crazy things or whatever. So this, like, very beautiful girl from Dubai, like, was just at the party. It was the weirdest thing ever, and only something that, like, the spoiled kid of a super rich parent would ever do. And anyways, um, since the subscriber's friend, Will, didn't know who this girl was, he went in and introduced himself. The spoiled kid immediately, since he has a one-inch weenie, right, uh, this was threatened by this and needed to intervene. So sure enough, the spoiled kid is like, goes up to Will and is like, hey, like, you're trying to steal my girlfriend. By the way, this was not his girlfriend. This was like some kind of like escort type business. I, I don't even know what it was. Like, I genuinely don't even know. Maybe it was his girlfriend, but not really, if you know what I mean, right? So Will immediately backs off. He's like, all right, man, like, I was just, I don't know who this is. I was introducing myself. And the spoiled kid didn't, like, try and fight him, which is kind of weird. And I guess the subscriber and the spoiled kid kind of just assumed that the, uh, or the subscriber and his friend Will kind of just assumed that the spoiled kid, uh, I don't know, gave up or just didn't care about it anymore. Like, just didn't care about the whole instance. But they were wrong because the next day they went to the beach because it was during the summer. And there was kind of a beach in the area that they were at. So it was a cool kind of attraction. A lot of people would go there. Um, water was nice enough. It wasn't like a jacuzzi or something, but it was nice. It wasn't it was temperate enough for like a pool. Uh, a, and I, I don't know if it's a lake or an ocean, doesn't matter. It's a beach either way. So they're at the beach and the beach, the, the lake or ocean is big enough that, you know, boats can be in it. So maybe it is like, maybe they live in a coastal town that's by the ocean because uh, the spoiled kids parents have a boat. And they let him drive around in the boat, which is honestly more productive use of his time than like crashing cars or beating up kids. So especially more after he started beat up a bunch of kids, they encouraged him to go more and more in the boat. So the subscriber and his friend Will were just kind of like in the water. And that's when they see this boat coming at them. And they're like, okay, that's a little bit weird. And that's when the boat starts, continues to come at them. So the subscriber is like, hey, maybe this guy isn't really paying attention. Let's get out of the water. So they start swimming away. And the boat gets closer and closer, and it's very apparent that they're coming after him. So the subscriber and Will barely make it out of the water before the boat, like, literally crashes onto land and almost smashes through Will, right? Almost really seriously hurts him. The, the good thing is, right, the spoiled kid is not a good enough pilot to really aim this thing correctly, but smashes it onto land and goes, like, right by Will's head. It was a very close call. Obviously, a bunch of the people on the beach were freaking out. Boat was completely ruined. The spoiled kid was yelling at the subscriber and Will, like, you made me crash my boat. That's what you get for talking to my girlfriend. And they're like, what? So, yeah, once again, the parents are called. And there's, like, some lifeguards, security officer, police, whatever. It's a whole scene. Everyone has to clear the beach. And the parents come. And for the first time ever, the, or the spoiled kid's parents do not come in a rage. They're not yelling. They're not freaking out. They're just completely silent. They're very calm and collected, which one would think that would mean that they were kind of used to this and they were just like, whatever. But no, actually the opposite. They're done at this point. So it comes over and the police officer's like, all right, you know, this is a little bit bigger. So we need a $10,000 fine and we'll clean this all up. Right. And the parents will say, no, the police officer's like, okay, well, you know, that means we have to, like, pursue legal action with your son and all this kind of stuff. And they're like, our son? No. Him. Yes. And they point to their son. And the spoiled kid's like, what? This kid remembers, like, 20 or something. He had to repeat high school a bunch of times, which is fine, but just context. And they're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, Billy. They look at him. Let's call him Billy, right? Like, you are no longer living with us. You have no respect for us. For us. You have no respect for anything that we've done for you. It's time that you learn how to actually be, you know, a real person. They're, and he's like, dude, what? Like, just pay, the, just pay the fine, mom. Like, it's whatever. They're like, no. 
And at this point, like they explain that they have been on like the verge of this for a while. But as of tonight, they're kicking Billy out. And as of a couple weeks ago, they had been starting to look into the process of legitimately disowning him as a son. And he's like, dude, what? That's not chill at all. Screw you guys. So yeah, they ended up not paying the $10,000 to the cops. So the cops decided to pursue him. And this kid was an adult. I didn't get an update on exactly what punishment happened. But apparently, like, Billy was still kind of... He was able to, like, get... Like, he was able to get some money out of his parents before they completely cut off all of his credit cards. So he was able to spend a lot of money really quickly, but then all of his cards got frozen. And the subscriber... Like, this happened, like, last summer. So to this day, the subscriber has not seen Billy since. Maybe he's in some, like, random European country. Uh, just... <laughs> I, I... He has no idea. But uh, moral of the story is, uh, don't take advantage of your parents... Because, you know, maybe they'll just drop you one day. Is that the moral Click of the story? Click on the video on screen right know. now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. From a kid who thinks he can be a jerk because his dad runs the place and gets destroyed, to a rich kid who thinks he is great at everything because he's never been told no in his life, and life comes to him fast, these are the most satisfying stories of rich kids who think that they run the world getting destroyed in the real world. So the subscriber who submitted the story one summer had an internship at an investment bank or bank or one of those type of banking internships. Basically, this kid was in college and he wanted to go into kind of banking or finance. So he, he, he got one of those internships at a bank and these were pretty competitive. So he was pretty, uh, he was pretty well prepared. He was pretty professional and he was definitely up to par with the quality that this bank wanted. However, you know, there was a couple other kids that were interns as well. I think the intern class was like four to five, but like w the one of the interns, right? Right, was distinguishably a lot worse than the others and very clearly did not care. The reason was, was because this kid did not get in this internship out of merit, out of skill, out of, you know, grit and the ability to, you know, persevere through tough times. No, this kid got the internship because his dad was literally CEO of the bank. This wasn't like one of the big banks like JP Morgan Chase, Citibank. This was a much smaller one, but it was still really big enough. And obviously if your dad is CEO, it's you can probably swing an intern position at it. Like you could probably do that. Um, so anyways, right, on the first day of like meeting all of them, right, it was like the first like meeting was over Zoom and then they were gonna do it in person, but there was like a little like pre-meeting type thing where they told you about like information, uh, what to expect, um, a little get together, the other interns and the subscriber and all the interns got together on a Zoom meeting. Well, four of them did because the fifth one was 10 minutes late. Can you guys guess who the fifth one was? Let's see, A, B, C, A, it was the subscriber. B, it was another kid who actually worked hard to get there. Or C, the CEO's son who didn't have to do a thing and got the internship because of nepotism. Have you answered A or B? Well, uh, I don't know, you're just wrong, because it was C. Sure enough, it was the CEO's son who was like 10 minutes late or whatever. So while the kids were like sitting in the Zoom meeting, like just listening to, okay, so you're gonna have to get there by, you know, nine every morning, uh, you're expected to do X, Y, or Z. If you have any questions, here's a good contact for me or your direct supervisor. Uh, like this isn't like supposed to be like competitive, like comp like you're supposed to like work with each other. Uh, like you could all get job offers. Cause the thing about the internship is like, you really want a job offer at a job offer afterwards. That's like the best option or in a couple of years or whatever. And so they were trying to say like, it's not competitive between you guys. You could all get job offers, really work together. Cause that's what we do at the bank anyways. And then like 10 minutes in, this kid just shows up randomly and this, you know, this kid just like comes in, he's all disheveled. All the other guys dress up for their Zoom meeting because like they were kind of told in the email, hey, be a little formal. Like I know it's over Zoom or whatever, but kind of like show up, you know, just kind of dress up a little bit for Zoom. But this kid came in with a big sweatshirt on, backwards hat, which is totally fine to walk around in. And like, if you're just a totally fine casual outfit, but bro, if you're really trying to like, I don't know, put it together for like a, an official meeting or something like that. And it says, don't dress casually, then don't dress casually. But sure enough, since this was the kid of the CEO, he literally didn't care. And he came in 10 minutes late, dressed up all sloppily or whatever. So anyways, 20 minutes go by and it's time for all the kids to introduce each other or introduce each other, introduce themselves and meet each other. So sure enough, right, they go around and uh, they, they all say their first and last names. And the subscriber notices 
because like the subscriber did a lot of research about the bank just because during the interview he wanted to he was prepared if they're going to ask a history question about the bank like when was it founded who's the current ceo what is like all these kind of information right they ended up not asking those specific questions but for that reason the subscriber knew all this information so when he heard the last name of this kid it matched up with the last name of the ceo of the bank so, you know, very quickly with a nice little Google search, um, the CEO of the bank was like, it was a big, en- it wasn't a huge bank, but it was a big enough bank that this guy had like a public profile. And through some Google, uh, Google searching, right, he found that the name of the kid who was in the internship program happened to match up exactly with the name of the kid of the CEO of the bank. And after a bit more research, he found a photo and the photos matched up. So after the Zoom meeting and doing a bit of research, the subscriber realized that one of the interns is actually the kid of the CEO of the bank that they were working at. So anyways, on the first day, sure enough, this kid, uh, the subscriber and all the other interns that actually worked to get there, they, uh, you know, they, they struggled. They got, you know, they understand what it takes or they understand how valuable this is because they put in the work to get it. That's one thing you'll see. When people are just handed everything, they won't understand the value of it. In fact, a perspective is, in a sense, they're robbed of the true um, importance. Like, they're, they are robbed of, you know, the, the joy of, you know, reaping the rewards because, you know, you're not reaping the rewards anything. You're just giving it. But anyways, it was very, very, very apparent in the way that all these kids, like, uh, showed up because the ones that worked for it showed up five minutes early, if not 10 minutes early, because, you know, you never know how long it takes with traffic, with navigating the, you know, the New York City bus system or train system, whatever, right? Um, So sure enough, they showed up like at minimum 5, 10, 15 minutes early. But the, you know, the spoiled kid, we're just going to call him the spoiled kid from this point on. He literally came in 25 minutes late. And he had some lame excuse like, uh, sorry, man, bus got like, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like traffic or something like that, which like fair enough, like, sure, I guess. But at the end of the day, you got to be prepared for that. It's your first day. If that happens like two weeks into the job, then I think that's more acceptable. But on your first day of work, especially for something really important like this, you got to show up at least give yourself a, a good enough margin, especially if you're doing work in New York City. Like I know some of you guys are out of the country or the country I live in the United States and you've never been to New York City. And some of you guys is in the country have never been in New York City. That place is crazy. You got to give yourself a lot of time because like traffic and uh, stuff will happen. And especially when you want it to least happen. So sure enough, they're in there the first day and they're doing work. And when you're an intern, especially for like a banking intern, you're not doing anything too crazy. Like for the most, you will be like, the most extensive thing you'll do is probably like research or something like that. But for the most part, you're kind of just a coffee monkey and a uh, PowerPoint slide monkey and a, an Excel monkey. You're not doing that much. So sure enough, right, they're just rearranging stuff on Excel. Um, they're just kind of like editing PowerPoint slides. It's a lot of work, but it's nothing's like that hard or that interesting or stimulating if they kind of just give like the interns and the very low level employees like kind of the grunt work that no one really wants to do so they're all sitting around doing it and they're all given one big glob of an assignment so it's like they're given one stack where it's like okay you got to do all of this you got to do this um all this kind of stuff right so sure enough there are you know there's all these things that they got to do And um, the thing is, though, it wasn't divided up evenly between them. It was just given to one of them. And they said, "Okay, I need you to delegate all the uh, I don't know. I need you guys to delegate the work between like amongst yourself. We're not going to delegate the work for you. That's up to you guys. So sure enough, right, they just kind of like all four of them, not the fifth one, all four of them, they go in and, uh, you know, They just, you know, they go and they grab some of the work or they delegate some of the work if it's not like paperwork. Because a lot of it was Excel, PowerPoint, stuff like that, research. So the one kid who didn't was the spoiled kid. Because why would he have to work? His dad runs the place. He just shows up because his dad isn't going to let him play Fortnite all summer like he did last summer, right? He actually has to get a job or something. Like, screw you, dad. Give me all these opportunities. I just want to play Fortnite and do nothing all day. Meh. But anyways, right? Uh, sure enough, like all the other, the, the other four interns, including the subscriber, kind of gave this kid a side eye. Like, are you really just going to sit there and not do anything? So, yeah, sure enough, they end up doing all the work and the kid is on his phone watching like TikTok videos or something. 
and by like eight at night or something because they wanted to make sure they got it all done and really show initiative on the first day. First of all, the kid left like at three, which they're supposed to leave at five. And the others stayed till eight. Loki, the reason was because it was work for five people to finish at five. But if you only have four people working on it, you're going to have to like stay a couple extra hours because the last person didn't pull through. You really do hate to see it. And this, pa- this was a pattern that literally just continued on and on and on again. However, you know, one of these days, it's actually like about a month into the internship and the interns are doing really well. I mean, the four of them are. The fifth one, aka the spoiled kid, literally sits there and does nothing all day. So uh, is he doing well? I don't know. But it, it really good reputation. Um, the interns are accruing right now. Everyone sees them as really uh, capable and uh, just really impressed by what they're able to do. So now they're given a more official assignment. And also for the first time ever, they're each given individual things they're supposed to do. Because you, the reason for this is they're each assigned to individual teams. So each of them is like given as part of a team or whatever. And they're all given a very important research role. Basically, they've been doing research the whole time, or the four of them have have been doing research. The spoiled kid had not. And uh, they had done a really good job, so they were all, like, four to five different teams were, you know, going to be presenting to investors, and they were pretty important meetings. So these interns were given a super important job, and they were informed of how important the job was, to do research to give to the analysts and associates to put together for slides that would be given to the VPs or the MDs or whatever that would then present it. So what ended up happening was pretty funny because basically what happened here was you have to realize the spoiled kid had not done any research at all for the last two weeks. So he has no idea what this whole research thing is, right? So all the other kids do a really good job. The subscriber and the other three, they do a really good job. They supply really good information to the VPs and the analysts and associates or whatever. They put together good presentations. And, you know, it's, it's a good enough presentation that if the investor wanted to invest based on the information, they would have. And if it wasn't right for them, then they wouldn't invest. But it wasn't because, you know, the information was bad or it was presented in a poor way. However, with the spoiled kid, the spoiled kid, first of all, he doesn't know how to do any of it because he's never done any of it. Second of all, he's too arrogant to ask for help. He's too kind of like full of himself to believe that he ever has to ask anyone else for help, especially the the poor kids that he was like working with. Like he'd never have to ask them. He's above them. They're below him. And uh, a combination of arrogance and uh, procrastination led him to a point where like uh, two hours before the deadline, he's like, okay, I just got to figure this out. And the thing is, right, instead of actually doing research on, you know, whatever specific thing they're supposed to do research on, he just plugged in random numbers. The thing is, though, the random numbers were, like, close enough to being the right numbers. Like, if you had no, basically, if you had no context and you just believed these numbers at face value, it's like, if I said, uh, like, a hamburger had a trillion calories in it, you wouldn't believe me because that's not reasonable. But if I said a hamburger had 300 calories and it actually had 800, you would probably believe me even if 300 felt a little bit low because it's in the range of possibility. Same thing if like a, I don't know, a piece of steak had 500 calories, but I said it had 1200, you would probably believe me. But if I said it had a billion, you wouldn't believe me. So these kids, so the spoiled kid put in random numbers that were close enough to being realistic that the, you know, the analysts and VPs didn't check them over because to check them over would literally to be doing the grunt work again. And the whole point of the interns was to do the grunt work and to find the information. So the analysts and VPs created this whole presentation or an entire like deck or whatever these like bank people do. What I, I have, I'm not a banker, right? I I'm a little bit, I'm into stocks for my own personal, you know, financial security. If you ever want me to talk about that on my like second channel, let me know. But uh, yeah, so they put together a whole presentation. However, mid-demonstration to these like very sophisticated, important investors, there was obvious holes in the presentation and something was fishy and the investors were questioning the numbers that they were showing. And the analysts and VPs were starting to realize on the spot that something was not right about their models. Something was not right about the information that they were given. And apparently the presentation was a massive disaster. Like the whole thing completely exploded in their faces. So all the analysts the next day are kind of sitting in their office. They have a little, we're not analysts, sorry. The interns are all kind of sitting in their little intern office, right? So when they're all sitting in there, 
one of the uh, one of the, like the the managers walks in and says, "I need to speak to the spoiled kid right now." And the spoiled kid is on his phone playing like I don't know Fortnite or something. And like the other three or other four of them are doing work, and the spoiled kid looks up, and the other kids look over too because they're like, "What?" And like a whole team of like executives walk in and like we just lost like our fourth biggest client because the information you gave us was faulty. Like, where did you get that information? He's like, uh, I just, and they're looking at him. They're like, we looked over the data and on closer inspection, it looks like you just randomly put numbers in there. And all the other kids are kind of looking at each other like, okay, I totally believe the spoiled kid would do something stupid enough like that. Like it's totally not out of the realm of possibility that the spoiled kid would just spam in random numbers and not actually do the work. And uh, yeah, sure enough, it, this, is, this is probably the greatest thing. The spoiled kid's dad is called down and he walks down into the office and he just has this look of like disappointment right on his face. And what ends up happening is the spoiled kid's own dad tells him that he's let go, that he's fired. The spoiled kid's dad fires his own son because he messed up as an intern so badly that they lost their, like, fourth biggest client. I'm not even kidding you. And if you thought that this spoiled kid was bad, then you are not, you are not ready for the next spoiled kid story. You are simply not physically prepared for the amount of spoiled in this next story. Well, let's hop into it. So the subscriber in this story is working at a sports broadcasting company as an intern over the summer. So I don't really know. It wasn't like ESPN or anything too big like that, but it was a pretty big, at least locally, sports broadcasting company. So they covered all things in sports or whatever, sports media, uh, you know, stuff like that. I, I, I'm not super well versed in that field. So if I make some mistakes like uh, with technical things and you guys are super big sports fans, just it, keep going. <laughs> don't, 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 uh, you know, don't take it too personally in the comments. I'll do my best. But anyways, right. So sure enough, right. There's, there was two interns. There's a subscriber, and then there's the spoiled kid, right? So basically, the spoiled kid, it wasn't as if, you know, his dad was the CEO of the company like last time. However, his dad was like a really big shot, like a hot shot, like big boy lawyer type dude. And he like knew the guy who like ran the sports company and basically said like, hey, like uh, my, my son really wants to be an intern here. I know he's not qualified, but remember when we represented your company last time and we did a really good job? I would really appreciate it if you did a favor for me too. Kind of like a conversation like that happened behind closed doors. And sure enough, the very not so qualified spoiled kid got a job with a subscriber who was fairly qualified. And you might be thinking, oh, the subscriber just like has a big head saying that he's qualified. Well, at the end of the day, the subscriber didn't have a dad who like tried basically bribed his way in. So he was at least qualified enough that he did need it to be bribed in, right? So uh, sure enough, the spoiled kid's arrogance was put on display almost right away because as interns, they were given a lot of work. So in some cases, when you're an intern, you're given nothing of importance, like literally nothing of importance. And I mean, that's fair enough. When you're an intern, you're coming in with no experience and you just want to you just want to gain some understanding of what you're doing here. But other places, interns will be given, you know, really important jobs. They're normally not jobs that require a lot of expertise because, I mean, how can you get the expertise without having the expertise? Or how can you do something that needs a lot of knowledge without accumulating that knowledge, you know? But sometimes, like, really kind of, like, jobs that anyone can do can turn out to be super, super important for, like, down the, like, the funnel, right? Like, getting data, like, getting information can be, like, you know, almost anyone could do it if they're taught briefly. But that is a super important role, you know what I mean? So sure enough, right... One of their very first assignments, because they were both given two different assignments, but they were in the same room, so they were, like, talking about it or whatever. Basically, one of their first assignments was to give information, like, real quick information for an on-air broadcasting program that was going to go on literally an hour later. So they are like, hey, like, this will only take you about 10 minutes, so we're giving you an hour to do it. But basically, we need you to get X, Y, and Z. It's, like, information on um, the broadcasters will use it online, like, on-air. And, um, yeah, so it's super important, whatever, right? So they're sitting in the room, and the subscriber, he's going to have to go up first, and the spoiled kid goes up second, or at least that's the line of, like, the information that'll be sent. So the subscriber really quickly goes up, finds, like, exactly what he's trying to look for, and, uh, yeah, gets it done in five minutes, because uh, bro's efficient, bro's got it done, and he, sets, he sends it upstream basically right away. 
So he's sitting there, and this boy old kid is kind of just like going around browsing ESPN, going on Twitter a little bit. So since they have a lot of time and they're not really that much in a rush yet because they still have like 50 minutes till it's very much a deadline, the subscriber asks the spoiled kid, so, like, uh, what do you have? And the spoiled kid's like, well, I'm supposed to send them stuff about golf or something, but that's really boring. I don't know if I want to do that. And this, it, the subscriber gives the spoiled kid a look, kind of like, okay, you find it boring, but you're not going to be the only person who watches this TV program. Obviously, they want you to have, you know, golf information send it upstream because that's what's on air. That's what you're supposed... Or radio or whatever, right? They're like, you know, you send that upstream because that's what people at the time... that Like, they need a variety of sports. There's people who are listening to that. I know that you don't find it interesting, but there are definitely people who are tuning in specifically to listen to that, you know? So, sure enough, right, you know, the the subscriber kind of looks at the spoiled kid like, bro, like, (laughs) think carefully with what you're doing here, right? And, uh, you know, the spoiled kid is like, you know, I might actually help them out. And the spoiled kid is super arrogant, thinking that he knows better than the people who run this place themselves. And he's like, you know what, I might actually help them out a little bit and make their stuff less boring and send them some really cool information about some football or whatever. And, uh, you know, the subscriber hears this and says, hey, man, I really don't think that's a good idea. I mean, I'm sure that you have a lot of input and I'm sure you have a lot of good stuff. Subscribers being super nice here. But he's like, I'm sure you have a lot of input. I'm sure you have a lot to give. But look, this is our first assignment and they're asking for very specific stuff. Um, Maybe tell them about what you want to send them about football after the fact so they can like include it tomorrow. I also just think it's too late right now because the people who will be getting the information are expecting expecting golf information and maybe they have a football segment later. It might just mess things up. And this, you know, this boiled kid's like, yeah, maybe you're right, is kind of just sitting there. But he didn't say, yeah, maybe you're right, and like, uh, yeah, okay, you're right, totally, I get it, in a way that's like, oh, you changed my mind. He said it in a, yeah, I guess, kind of in a way like, whatever, man, I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. Sure enough, right, the spoiled kid does not heed the subscriber's advice because eventually, five minutes before the deadline, he sends in the information and loudly says, done. So the subscriber <laughs> knows he's done because he, the spoiled kid loudly says done. So he looks over, he's like, oh, so did you end, did you end up sending in the golf inf- information? And the spoiled kid looks at him and says, nope. <laughs> and the, the subscriber looks at him with this look of, oh man, you messed up. And the subscriber for a second is like, okay, you messed up, but does that mean we messed up? Because, like, they're the only two interns. Thankfully, right, the information, like, each of them was given a separate, you know, bundle of information to send, and it was very clear that the spoiled kids was the wrong one and not the subscribers. But anyways, right, they tune into the live programming, and the first, like, like I think it was radio, right? So the first uh, sound bite that they hear was, you know, the subscriber's information that he sent in with some analysis and whatever by the TV host, or not, sorry, the radio host. And then it was the spoiled kids bit. And they start saying, okay, and now in this news for golf, and then like dead silence. And that's when like the subscriber realized that, yep, this is like basically the spoiled kid sent a bomb down the pipeline, bro. Like he just messed the whole thing up. And they're like, oh, Sorry, we're going to come back to you in just a second with the golf information. Um, We're going to go to commercial break. And it was like an unscheduled commercial break. And literally 30 seconds later, the door slams open and says, Why did we get football information? We're supposed to get information about golf. And uh, the spoiled kid was like, well, golf is super boring, so I thought I'd make your program less boring. And literally the guy goes up to him and doesn't like physically like shake him or anything, but goes up to him very intimidatingly, just stares him down and is like, that's not your call to make. So the subscriber pipes up and says, hey, like I can get you that information in like five minutes. And they said, "Okay, good. Do that right now. So sure enough, the subscriber goes, sends in the information and the program is like definitely jumbled up because the ad breaks in the wrong time and all this kind of stuff. But eventually they get all the information they need. And the subscribe the spoiled kid is like, bro, they should have like while this while the subscriber is frantically trying to get information about this golf stuff. The spoiled kid is saying, bro, they should have totally taken my advice and did the football segment instead. Like, their segment super sucks. Like, I'm listening right now. It's going to be so bad. 
And the subscriber's like, man, like, I'm sure it's better, but, like, he doesn't actually believe that. But he's like, I'm sure you're right, but you can't do this so last minute, it's gonna, like, it messes up the whole line of production. Like, this stuff is live. It's not last, it's not, like, pre-recorded, like these videos. And sure enough, I know this is, you know, the spoiled kid's like, yeah, I guess. I don't know, man. I just think they should have really listened to me. So an hour later, because they're all sitting in there kind of like awkwardly, like uh, they, they really don't have a job next. And I think that they might have had more jobs coming up, but obviously management had to figure out what was going on with the interns or specifically one of the interns. So sure enough, the door opens up an hour later and the manager comes in and is like, hey, what happened? And, you know, instead of like, you know, the, the spoiled kid staying silent, he immediately pipes up and is like, well, you guys want a golf information, but... That stuff was super boring, dude. So I was just trying to help you guys out, and I sent in football information instead, and it just gets cut off mid-sentence, and the manager's like, you can't do that. You're an intern here. We got a way of doing things. We asked you for some information, and it totally messed up the thing on live. Like, our whole program got jumbled up. People had to work extra hard for no good reason other than you thinking that you know the business better than people have been doing this for 30 years. And there was kind of like a dead silence when I think the spoiled kid kind of realized that he was in the wrong. And that's when the manager says, I'm sorry to say this. I don't know. Your dad's not going to be happy, but we, we can't we can't keep using intern. We seriously can't. You're a liability. The spoiled kid's like, what? I was going to make this place 10x better. And the guy's like, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Click on the video on screen that. right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to a brand new story. Today we have a story of a spoiled brat who doesn't get what he wants so he decides that, oh, well then I should just destroy the entire school. Not even kidding. Let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story Gene. And anyways, in Gene's class, there's a kid who we're going to call the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid didn't really have any friends, not because everyone there was mean to him, but because everyone there saw him as who he was as the spoiled kid, who is a jerk to everyone because he could be. Or not just because he could be, but because he believed that he was better than everyone else. He believed that he was a god, man. I mean, that's just kind of how his parents raised him, which it's always good to raise your kid with a bit of confidence, but not like this. So anyways, one day, the teacher was handing back a pretty big test that they all did, and the spoiled kid probably believed that he didn't even need to study for this. So yeah, when the teacher was handing them back, I mean, the teacher was walking around the classroom. You can tell when the teacher's like handing back a like piece of like a test and they flip it over and they kind of like, you know, the teacher was putting it front side up for some people and flipping it over for others because, you know, you already know the teacher's like, I know you don't want your classmates seeing this grade. And eventually, Gene is watching as the teacher goes over to the spoiled kid and hands back a test. The spoiled kid looks at it very quickly, has a look on his face, and immediately raises his hand. Look, whenever you do poorly on a test, you always hate to see it. It's not a fun sight, and I agree with that. However, sometimes, like, at least, at a minimum, look at what mistakes you made, and if you think that you deserve a different grade, at least point out why and where you think the teacher went wrong with grading their, you know, grading the test or whatever. So, this, you know, Gene raises his hand, and, you know, the teacher kind of, like, looks around and is a little confused because he's kind of thinking to himself, well, this is kind of a quick turnaround, like, I did just... Did, did Gene, or not, sorry, did Gene, did the spoiled kid even look at the test, or is he just raising his hand? And the teacher, you know, he's not going to ignore him, so he's like, yes, yeah, spoiled kid, like, what's up? Like, what, what do you want to say? And the spoiled kid's like, ah, uh, you made a mistake. And the teacher looks at him and uh, says, I don't think I did. And the, te and the spoiled kid's like, I know I deserve a better grade than this, and I will not settle for this. And the teacher's like, well, I mean can't really change the past on this one, but you could always study harder for the next test. That's a pretty good way of changing things. And the spoiled kid's like, no, you don't understand. And the teacher's like, no, I think I do understand. Like, you didn't study enough for the test, and I mean, here are the consequences of your actions, I guess. And the spoiled kid says, no. And the spoiled kid stands up. He says, I demand an A on this test. And the teacher looks at him, and everyone in the class, including Gene, is kind of just looking at this kid, and is like, all right, spoiled kid, like, what's your move here, bro? Like, this is, <laughs> you're acting kind of goofy right now, bro, I'm not going to lie to you. And, uh, you know, the teacher's just looking at the spoiled kid, and is like, 
no, like I will not give you an A because you demand it. Like, I'm not going to degrade my job for you just because you want something. I'm not going to, like, soil the integrity of, like, what I am doing just to, like, entertain this to give you what you want. And the spoiled kid looks at him and says, I'm going to count to three. It's so funny, when, man, when, I, when people, like, start counting down, just assuming that that's going to change something. It's like a classic, like, trick that, like, parents will use, and I get it because... Parents can actually give consequences, but sometimes people will be like, give me something. And the person will be like, no. And they'll be like, three, two. And it's kind of just like, what? So the spoiled kid counts all the way down. And the teacher's just looking at him with a look of like, I'm not changing what I'm doing. Like, are you serious right now? And the spoiled kid looks at the teacher and is like, fine. You've made your choice. You shall, you will regret this. Or he says something along the lines of that. And the spoiled kid storms out of class to who knows where, right? So about five minutes later, well, first of all, immediately after, it's super awkward in there. And the teacher's like, well, then. And the class laughs a little bit, just trying to break the, the awkwardness, right? So about five minutes later, Gene raises his hand because he has to go to the bathroom really bad. And the teacher's like, okay, sure, just make it quick. So Gene gets up, walks over to the bathroom. And when he opens up the guy's bathroom, he sees the spoiled kid in there. So I guess... Gene didn't really know where the spoiled kid went off to, but now he does, and he's like, oh, okay. And the spoiled kid looks at him, and Gene looks at the spoiled kid, but Gene looks at the spoiled kid, and he notices that the spoiled kid is shoving the toilets full of paper towels. The spoiled kid is just got, like, he broke into, like, he didn't only empty out the paper towels that were in the dispenser, he broke into the little cabinet underneath that was just full of paper towels, and he had taken every single one, and was just stuffing them into the toilets, right? He was just clogging up the whole system. And the spoiled kid was like, get out of here, Gene, I'm busy. And Gene's like, uh, can I use the bathroom? He's like, no! <laughs> and Gene's just kind of looking at him like, dude, what? And yeah, so the spoiled kid continues to, like, stuff more paper towels into the toilets. And Gene's like, um, what are you doing over here? And the spoiled kid says, just, just get out of here. You don't want to know. And, uh, you know, he's like, uh, I kind of got to go to the bathroom. He's like, didn't go to the private bathroom. And so Gene's like, okay, whatever. So Gene walks over, goes to, like, the private bathroom, which is technically the teacher's bathroom. And Gene would get in a little bit of trouble, not nothing crazy right but he'd be like get out like the teacher would be like you can't be in here get out of here right but gene goes into the private bathroom either way and uh while he's sitting on the toilet he hears this kind of like or he feels this kind of rumbling right it's like the pipe systems are rumbling and this is when like he gets off the toilet and the, he looks underneath and the toilet is like pouring water out from the bottom of it and he's like oh my god and he steps out, right? And he's like, oh my God, did I do this? And then he looks around and he just sees water leaking out of everything. And that's when he hears on the loudspeaker an announcement saying that everyone has to go to the front yard, which is like outside in front of the school. So after that, like 30 seconds after, he sees all these teachers filing out their students in a single file line. He sees puddles of water forming everywhere. And he just does not make the connection with what Gene just did, right? So they're all standing outside and there's like you know people are coming over like i i don't know not the fire department but like the emergency plumbers dude i don't know that's obviously not right but you know there's like official people coming over everyone's standing outside it's been about 30 minutes and everyone's standing in line with their class the spoiled kid is nowhere to be seen but um Gene honestly doesn't think anything of it. And also, Gene doesn't make the connection that maybe, maybe there's a connection between the fact that the spoiled kid disappeared into the bathroom and was clogging them with paper towels and the fact that the whole piping system is going down, right? So all of a sudden, a teacher comes up. And not like a teacher, like one of the uh, teachers that would teach a class, but one of the, I should say, faculty, right? So one of the administrators comes up to the teacher and Gene's standing in line. And the faculty whispers something or says something in a low tone to the teacher. The teacher looks at Gene and points at him, and Gene is asked to come. And Gene is really confused at this point. And the faculty is giving him this really dirty look. He's like, well, what did I do, right? So they all bring, so like Gene is brought to the principal's office. And sure enough, they get to the principal's office. And you know who's sitting there in the chair? The spoiled kid. And, okay, sorry, they're not even in the principal's office. They're standing outside of the school. Yes, the school is flooded, my fault. 
they're standing there. You know who else is standing there? The spoiled kid, the principal, a bunch of faculty, and the security guard, and they're all looking upset, and the spoiled kid is just looking down at his shoes, right? So they're all like, um, or not all of them. Gene's like, what's going on? The principal's like, don't play funny with me. We know that you were in there while the spoiled kid was in there, and we think that you helped him destroy the school. And Gene was just looking at them with this look of just complete shock, confusion, and then he started to realize that it was the spoiled kid that backed up the toilets, that broke the entire plumbing system, that flooded the school. Real quick, if you've made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. Uh, that'll be the secret word of the day. And then also, if you are new, subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing. So anyways, Gene is just standing there and he's trying to like explain to the principal like, okay, I was in there briefly to go to the bathroom, but I didn't like, w no, I, I, I didn't do it. And she's like, well, the spoiled kid hasn't said otherwise. And the spoiled kid is literally just sitting there looking down at his shoes or whatever. And he's just like, like, how did you even know I was in there? Like, I was only in there for a second. And she's like, you know, we, while we, we were walking into the bathrooms, like, or one of the teachers was walking by, he saw you walk out of the bathrooms. And then, you know, there was like a whole flooding incident. He saw the spoiled kid walk out as well. And the spoiled kid hasn't said that you haven't been a part of it. So for all we know, you two were equally involved. So, you know, at this point, Gene turns to the spoiled kid. He's like, dude, you need to tell them I didn't do anything. And the spoiled kid just continues to look down at his shoes. And at this point, Gene is like, oh my God, they actually think that I blocked up the toilets and destroyed the school. So at this point, Gene's like, why do you think I would have done this? And the principal's like, frankly, we don't know. But we also don't know why the spoiled kid would have done this. And, you know, at this point, Gene's like, well, actually, I was in his class and his teacher gave him back like a really bad like assignment. And, you know, he demanded that the teacher change the grade. And the teacher said no. And then he got up, said, you're going to regret this and stormed out of the class into the bathroom, which I had to go to the bathroom. And I saw him in there stuffing the toilets with paper towels and yeah, I got up, left, went to the private bathroom, and I don't know how else to say it other than I just didn't do it. Like, I just genuinely don't know how else to say it other than just, it wasn't me. I'm innocent here. And the, and the principal's like, okay, well, that's a very convenient story, right? And he's like, okay, well, um, I, I don't know what to say. And they say, you know what? Give us time, we'll know the truth. But until then, you two are staying here with a security guard. So apparently the school had a lot of cameras in there. So what the teacher was or the principal was referring to was that the truth would eventually come out from the cameras, right? But until then, Gene was deemed as guilty as the spoiled kid. And Gene just wasn't trying to have it because, you know, for all he knew, like the, the cameras could have taken like weeks to get out. For all he knew, the cameras were damaged in the flood and that there wouldn't have been any footage at all to free him from like this charge, right? and that he would have been stuck getting the same punishment as the spoiled kid just because of bad luck and just how fate works. So yeah, he's sitting there, and right now it's just Gene, the spoiled kid, a security guard, and half the school is lo looking at them all, right? They're just staring, they're pointing, they're talking, and uh, Gene's pretty embarrassed, and he's not just embarrassed, he's angry at the spoiled kid. He's angry at the spoiled kid for letting such a rumor circulate. He kind of looks at the spoiled kid. He's like, bro, like, are you serious right now? And the spoiled kid looks at him. He's like, what? He's like, dude, you know what? Just like, bro, just tell them. Like, just tell them I didn't do anything. The spoiled kid's like, well, no. And he's like, why? Like, you're the one who decided to do this. I didn't mean to do it. I wasn't involved in any of this. I just wanted to go to the bathroom. And the spoiled kid's like, well, that's what you get for not helping me. And Gene's like, What? Like, for me not helping you, you're going to, like, say that I did it, but if I did it, you would have said that I wasn't, like, if I helped you, you would have said that I didn't do it? Like, what kind of world do I live in? And Gene is just not having it right now. And, you know, at this point, the security guard's like, quiet, you two. And Gene kind of looks up and looks down. He starts whispering at the spoiled kid. He's like, dude, I swear to God, there's a reason why people here don't like you. And you know what? You're just making it even more clear to myself that the reason is true. The spoiled kid looks up. He's like, 
the school had it coming, man. That teacher really robbed me of that grade. And Gene looks at this kid and is like, dude, you failed that test because you didn't study. I remember because I was in your study group and you spent the whole time on your phone playing Clash Royale or something. And when we asked you a question, you said that we were nerds and that he was going to, you know, pass this test without being a nerd and that we were going to fail and that you were going to do so great. And yeah, look at where we are now. And Gene, and the spoiled kid looks at him. He's like, you know what? I was thinking for a second that I was going to say you didn't do it, but now I'm going to say that you're the mastermind the whole, behind the whole thing. And for a second, Gene kind of regrets going off on him because now he's like, well, I guess... <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think, like, he's like, dang. The truth is, I really don't think the spoiled kid was going to say anything anyways. I think the spoiled kid just wanted to, like, make Gene feel bad about it or whatever. But yeah, um, Gene's parents were called. And when Gene got back home, he tried explaining to them that he had nothing to do with it. But, you know, they weren't really believing him, right? Because it's like, of course you're going to lie about that. Of course you're not going to say, oh, I destroyed the school. Lol. Right? Of course you're going to be like, no, I didn't do anything. So he gets back home, and he is grounded. And it's not good. It is really not a good situation. He's not doing well at all. He's struggling. If we're, all, if we're, being, if we're being honest right now, it is a tough time. However, he gets back into school. His mom drives him in, super angry, even the next day. She's not cooled off yet, which, understandably, your son is accused of destroying the school. So he gets into school. And there's so much, so many, like, boarded up walls or whatever. They were actually allowed to be back in school the next day, which is pretty impressive. I guess the water damage wasn't super systemic, but there was still a lot of water damage. So some places were, like, blocked off or whatever. There was some stuff saying you couldn't go here. And that's when on the loudspeaker, his name was called, and he went up to the front office. And so the principal sat him down, and Jean was really terrified that she was going to say, like, uh, the footage was lost, sorry. Uh, now let's begin your punishment, right? But she said, hey, we reviewed the footage and it does seem that you went in for a very short time and you went right out after about two minutes. And it also seems like the spoiled kid went in long before you and was in there long after. So I think like your story adds up. We really have no reason now to believe that you were like a part of this and you're free to go. And Gina's is just looking at her. It's just like, thank you. No, thank you. And he gets up. Gene's having the best day ever. He walks out. And yeah, the spoiled kid suspended for a week. And uh, it's very awkward when the kid comes back into class and the teacher looks at him. Because, like, this kid's been out of class for almost two weeks at this point. He comes back into class, sits down in his normal seat, the spoiled kid. And the teacher comes and looks at him. The spoiled kid just looks at the teacher. And things go back. Click to on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today we have a story time of this Minecraft kid who thinks the wither is actually real and out to get him. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. So sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. So if you also want to send in a subscriber story, you can do so either to my Instagram or the Discord server. Both links are in the description. But the subscriber who sent in today's story, we're going to call him James. And as always, I get these names from the comment section, so leave a comment of a name you'd like me to use. It doesn't really matter. It can be your name, your mom's. I, I don't care. Anyways, right? So James, this happened to him back when he was in second grade. James is, I think, in like sixth grade now or seventh grade or something. He's, he's significantly older at this time. But this was back in the day when like, Minecraft was all the rage. And I don't mean like the second wave, like more recently, like 2019. I mean like the 2014, 15, 16 kind of era of Minecraft. That was a beautiful period to enjoy Minecraft, in my opinion. But anyways, right, so this point, James and his friends had just been discovering Minecraft. And we're going to call one of James's friends Minecraft Kid. And by the way, all these Minecraft Kid stories, they're not the same kid. I, I just call individuals Minecraft Kids. You got to understand that. Anyways, right, so one day James and his friends discover Minecraft, and it was like a huge new discovery to them. They all got super into it, but especially this one kid who we're calling the Minecraft kid, he probably got the most into it out of all of them. So, you know, at least when I first discovered Minecraft, it was like, it was the coolest thing ever. Everything was interesting. You load into a world and you, you build a dirt hut. That is so 
like exhilarating and now it's like run of the mill whatever but you know they were exploring it they were learning about things and they didn't really have a ton of access to the internet at that time as their parents obviously limited them and the fact that they were even able to get minecraft in the first place was pretty was pretty impressive for them like they were surprised their parents budged that much but yeah so they were all able to install minecraft and they couldn't go on any multiplayer servers and they didn't even know how to do that that was way too technical for them but they just went on one day and they were like building like a hut or whatever like a dirt hut they didn't they couldn't even really play together because they couldn't make a multiplayer server they couldn't join like multiplayer or anything but they were just all on their own worlds building stuff and creating stuff and you know on the first day of them doing that they would build like their first dirt hut and they'd come to school the next day and james would be like guys I found iron. They'd be like, what? And he'd be like, yeah, I broke with a wooden pickaxe and it gave nothing. And they're like, dude, I, th I, I think you won, bro. I think you beat the Minecraft, basically, bro. Like, it is, I'm not trying to make fun of that because, honestly, that was probably the best era. Legitimately, that was the best era when everything was cool. But anyways, right, so they progress on throughout the game. And, you know, but one day... James and his friends have been playing Minecraft for like a couple weeks at this point, and one day James and his friends are hanging out at, at, at recess or whatever, or they're chilling during a free period. I don't think he had free periods in second grade, I'm pretty sure he had recess, but I don't know, it wasn't specified in the story that was sent to me. So anyways, right, they're chilling, and James and his friends are there, and then the Minecraft kid runs up to them frantically, and is like panting, is like, guys, guys, I need to talk to you, and they're all just like, oh my god, dude, what's going on, like, is everything okay, are you good, like... Are, is someone, like, about to attack us? Is there a scary man in a white van trying to, like, get us all? Or, like, what's the deal here, bro? And he looks at them, he's like, Guys, guys, I was playing Minecraft, and I, I, I got access to the internet. And they're all like, <gasps> Because at this point, right, they don't really have access to the internet. He's like, I, I just had, I figured it out. I, I just had to go on quickly before my parents realized I was using the internet. Dude, to be fair, my mom didn't let me use the internet for a long time, and that is probably for the better. And I was reading this 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 message place, this message board, and they were talking about this 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 creature called the Wither, and they say if if you make it in Minecraft. It, it, it'll come for you in real life. And bro, look, they were in second grade. So James and his friends were like, is this true? <laughs> like, only in second grade would you not just flat out say, bro, it's a video game. You'd actually sit there, contemplate, and be like, is this legitimate? If I create this thing in Minecraft, will it spawn in the real life and come after me? Like, only in second grade, bro, would this ever happen. Which, like, I'm not even, I'm not even trying to, like, make fun of these kids, bro, because I was literally them. And to be fair, that was a great period of my life. But at this point, right, James and all of his friends kind of just take him at face value. And I know it sounds absurd, but like, bro, is second grade, it is what it is. But at this point, right, the Minecraft kid, James, and all of his friends are standing there at recess, starting to freak out because they're like, dude, what if we, like, what if the wither comes for us? And then James like, guys, guys, ho hold on, like you're fine, we're fine, as long as we, one of us, doesn't make the wither in Minecraft, there is not a chance that it will come after us. And even if we do, I am 90, 80, 50 percent certain that it won't actually happen. They're like, are you sure? It was on the internet, it has to be true. <laughs> as you shall learn, not everything that's on the internet is real. But anyways, right, so they all went back home, and they were, I mean, after school, of course, and, you know, they were kind of feeling okay, like, they weren't feeling that worried, they were feeling as if they were safe, because none of them were gonna go back and make the wither in Minecraft, they just weren't gonna do it, I mean, they didn't even know how to do it. And over the next couple days, you know, they eventually learn about the nether, and they build a nether portal, and some of them go in, and they learn, they find all these new things, and it's pretty cool, right, they're exploring Minecraft, they learn about the nether. And then several weeks later, they're just chilling at school, and it's James, the Minecraft kid who was initially, like, really worried about this and brought the whole suspicion to them. Some of the other friends as well, they were just hanging out. I think they were on the swings or something. They were talking about, like, oh, like, I just got, like, my first Minecraft dog yesterday. It, like, helps protect me against, like, enemies, and it's also just a nice pet to have around. They were talking about, like, oh, maybe I've heard of, like, name tags you can find in chests or whatever. And then one of the friends, we're gonna call him, uh, Ben, because I only need to give him a name once, right? Ben, like, walks up towards them 
with this look of like guilt and also terror and they're just like dude what is wrong because like something is definitely up and ben just looks at them with this guilty expression this look of like i'm so sorry and he just turns to them he's like guys I, I, I've done something really bad and they're all like, they start to get really nervous. They're like, no shot, no shot he did it. No shot he did it. He's like, guys, I was, I was exploring the nether. I was grinding for hours on the weekends and I got like a bunch of like wither skeleton skulls and they're like, start to panic because they learn like from like talking to some of the, like the older kids at the school how to actually make a, you know, a wither skull or a, uh, a wither and uh, they're like, no, dude, don't tell me. He's like, I had to see if it was true. I had to see if it was true. And the second I put the last head on, it started to, like, shake and, like, a color and glow. And it started to go up. And I just turned off the my Minecraft game. I haven't been on since. But, guys, I'm so sorry. But it's definitely coming for us now. And at this point, right, Ben, uh, the Minecraft kid, James, and all the other guys are just panicking they're freaking out real quick comment wither down below or comment the wither you can do either of them i'm going to search the comments by the term wither and we'll be hearting as many of those as possible so if you want to farm some hearts maybe even get top commenter on the channel make sure you comment wither down below and leave a like if you haven't if you want to claim your free nothing man i mean that's a pretty good deal anyways right so at this point James, Ben, the Minecraft kid, and all of their friends are terrified. So the bell rings, and they have to go back to class. And they can't pay attention at all, because in their mind, they think that at any moment, they'll hear down the hallways, like, the whooshing sound of, like, the wither when it spawns, or they'll see, like, wither skeleton skulls fly. At this point, right, they read a myth online, and they believed it to be true. And they have no idea how it's going to happen. But that almost makes it scarier, because that means that the wither could strike at any time and at any place. So James decides to take matters into his own hands. And James is one of the guys that he went up and actually talked to one of the older kids who did play Minecraft. And by older, I mean like fourth or fifth grade. And James decided that he was going to go talk to the kid and really figure out like how to like defend himself from the wither attack. And James explains the situation to this kid who's in fifth grade. And obviously this kid who's in fifth grade is just like in his head. He's like, this kid actually thinks the wither is real and actually going to come out. Almost like like the myth of, like, Herobrine. Like, the Herobrine was actually going to come and attack him if he made it in Minecraft. And he's like, this kid actually believes that the wither is going to attack him in real life? And the kid is a thing to himself. Because, like, you know, James is explaining the predicament. And explaining, like, man, what do I do? So, right, this kid in fifth grade cause he could have easily said, bro, that's not true. It's a myth that you read on the internet. Like, why would that even be true? But the kid decides to mess with them just a little bit more. And the fifth grader is like, bro, bro, you did what? Oh, my God, that's the first thing they teach you in Minecraft school. And he's like, you guys went to Minecraft school? And he's like, yeah, I totally did. It's totally real. And at this point, James is like, oh, my God. And the older kid's like, bro, like, okay, there is a way to fix it. Just hear me out on this. And the older kid goes on to explain slash make up on the spot that basically what needs to happen is Ben, the kid who spawned the, the wither, right? He has to return to the world where he made the wither in, and he has to fight it. And if he wins, then the curse is gone. But if he dies in Minecraft, they're all gonna die in real life. And at this point, right... James is like, bro, that's so much pressure, man. And uh, the, the older kid's like, hey, you should have taken these precautions before spawning a wither. So James runs back, tells his friends the unfortunate news, and they decide that that night they're going to, like, gear up and go to his friend's house. It was, like, it was a Sunday, it was a Friday anyways, so, like, you know, they just quickly explained that they wanted an impromptu sleepover. And, uh, yeah, James's mom was like, all right, well, I wish you guys gave me a little bit more heads up, but I was talking with the other moms, and they think it's okay, and we'll be hosting. So James, you know, tells the other friends, all right, bring your computers, we're going to do this, we're going to get him suited up, and we're going to fight the, the wither, and we'll be free from this curse. And so, yeah, anyways, right, James and Ben and the Minecraft kid and all of the other, you know, friends, you know, they all go over to James's house and, you know, they get set up and, you know, they're about to, they're preparing to open like the computer of, you know, Ben and Ben's like, guys, I, 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 I don't think I'm totally stacked. I don't know if I can do this. And they're like, dude, what do you have? He's like, I have an iron sword and iron armor. And they're like, oh my God, 
like that's not enough to defeat the wither and they're like but you have to do it and you know at this point ben is like all right guys this is this is it i'm doing it he opens up his laptop you know he fires up the minecraft world it's loading and they're all panicking and when it opens up right the wither is about to explode because we don't know the wither is like a boss in minecraft that like when it starts actually like begins there's like an explosion and ben is far enough away from the radius of the explosion that it doesn't take that much damage but like boom the wither starts starts firing wither skulls all around all around the place blowing up nearby mobs and structures and ben is just like oh my god and just turns around and runs away however he's hit by one of the wither skulls skulls that has the wither effect that is like still slowly taking damage away from ben and ben's like ah the whole time he's just running away taking damage being shot out being blown apart by this wither and everyone's like ben turn around fight it fight it fight it so eventually right ben does turn around he's on like three hearts left and they're like actually no run 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 and ben's like what do you want me to do and then the wither hits him he's taking wither damage he's on half a heart and then boom he dies and they're all just completely silent at this point. Because in their minds, that's a death sentence. They're all about to be executed by the Wither at any second. So what happens is when this happens, no one says anything. And then they all run down the stairs screaming. And at this point, James's mom is like, what is going on? Oh, uh, and James's mom is obviously pretty concerned at this point because all the kids come down screaming and like crying and she's like guys what happened and and they're all like blabbering on like we lost in a video game now we're all gonna die because the weather's gonna come out and she's like why one at a time one at a down calm down please and james is like mom we're all gonna die and she's like bro what, what are you talking about because she started to get a little concerned and he's like okay and he basically explains that they're playing minecraft and that they looked online and it said if they made this mob in minecraft that they, it was going to come after them and the only way to defeat it according to the older kid at school was that if they were able to defeat it in minecraft and that ben sucks at minecraft so he died to it and now they're all gonna perish in real life and, and james's mom is looking at them like guys that's not real. And they're like, but the internet said so. And then the older kid, he's like, yeah, the internet's full of lies. And the older kid was messing with you. And they all stop like crying for a second. They're like, what? Subscribe if you haven't already. And now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some of the recommended. Go watch one. I'll be very happy. The story time of a Minecraft kid who actually thought that creepers were real and embarrasses himself in front of everyone in his class during a trip to the dinosaur museum. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. The subscriber sent it to today's story, we're gonna call her Jade, and I got that name from the comment section, so if you want me to use your name, your friend's name, or really any name you want, leave it in a comment down below, and I'll do my best to try and use as many of those names as possible. Anyways, right, so this story happened to Jade when she was in second grade, and she's a bit older now, so this was a little while back, but back when Jade was in second grade, uh, you know, her class was doing this unit on dinosaurs and kind of... Uh, you know, dinosaurs, prehistoric era, everything like around that, fossils, all that good stuff. And they've been studying it for a while, and kind of the big thing for the, for any second grader at that school, and it was kind of known that like for the second grade, their big thing that they would do is they would spend like about a month covering dinosaurs and the kind of the prehistoric age, and then at the end of their long kind of study, whatever, and I mean, it's second grade, it's only so rigorous, but like at the end of the day, right, they spend a lot of time learning about dinosaurs, and kind of the, the big payoff for this big kind of month-long study is that they take a tri like a full day long trip to a really big dinosaur museum that's somewhat near them it's still like 45 minute bus right away but it's a pretty you know it's a pretty fun day and it's kind of known for everyone in the school is like the big fun day that all the second graders have and uh yeah at this point right it's about a week away and jade's getting pretty excited because it's a pretty big deal and i'm going to introduce another character into this story he is the minecraft kid there's nothing more i need to say besides he's in jade's class and things get very interesting very quickly and anyways, right, a week passes and it's finally the day. It's the big day. They all kind of like get there kind of early that morning. Their school normally starts around eight, but for that day, they're asked to get there at seven, which a lot of the parents are a little, you know, they wake up, drive up their kids and they're all kind of cranky because they have to get up at seven in the morning, which is a little inhumane. I'll, I'll be real. They don't have to get up at seven in the morning. They have to get up at like six to drive their kids there at seven. But all the kids, when they get there, are like kind of like all wide eyed and excited because, hey man, it's the big day. It's the 
the Dinosaur Museum Day. And so anyways, right, Jade, you know, she goes in and Jade has kind of a friend group of two other people. So it's kind of like a three person friend group. And they all walk onto the bus at the same time. And the thing is, right, the bus seats are by twos. So they realize that, all right, so one of us is going to have to sit next to like the other two. And, you know, they make it to about the middle row and all the other seats behind them are filled. And they decide, you know what, let's just sit on this row. So the row is has like two different sides and the two of Jade's other friends take the two seats on the other side. So Jade is going to take the aisle seat on the other side of the bus, right? And there's a kid sitting in the window seat and this kid happens to be, you guessed it, the Minecraft kid. Anyways, right, they sit down and uh, Jade's two friends kind of, they kind of space off slash go to sleep because they're still a little bit tired, as excited they are, you know, they're kind of tired and the thing is still like 30, 45 minutes away, so they kind of go to sleep, but Jade is kind of awake, you know, she still has enough adrenaline in her to keep her up, and she's kind of excited to go to the dinosaur museum, so she turns to the person next to her, which is the Minecraft kid, who, you know, she doesn't know that well, but, you know, they're friendly enough because they are in the same class, and she's kind of, she goes, she kind of just says something to the Minecraft kid along the lines of, hey, like, are you excited? The Minecraft kid said, yeah, this is a pretty big deal, I'm like... I'm really hyped. I've, you know, been thinking about it all night. I couldn't even really fall asleep that well last night. And she was like, yeah, honestly, same. This is going to be a really, like, exciting and fun day. And the Minecraft kid says, I'm so excited to go see, like, to try and find my favorite dinosaur of that period. And, you know, the Jade is like, oh, like, oh, that's really cool. And the Minecraft kid says, oh, before I tell you mine, what's yours? And I don't know, Jade says something, I don't know, pterodactyl or something. And then Jade's like, oh, what's your favorite Minecraft? Uh, <laughs> What's your favorite Minecraft? No, we're getting to that in a second. What's your favorite dinosaur of the time period? And the Minecraft kid said, oh, I'm a big fan of the Creeper. And she's like, oh, I haven't heard of that one. And the thing is, like, Jade had no idea what Minecraft was at this time, and it's only in, like, retrospective, looking back on this event, that she thought it was so funny what actually happened. But yeah, the Minecraft kid said, oh, yeah, it's like, it's like a green, it's a little small, it's like on all fours. And he doesn't say the part about how it explodes, right? He decides to leave that detail out, and Jade's like, oh, that's really cool, I don't remember us having a unit on it, but I must have just, like, not paid attention. We covered a lot of material. And yeah, the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, I really hope I'll find an exhibit, and if not, I'll ask around. And so anyways, right, they eventually get there, and they start, like, single file off the bus. So the teacher basically calls them all together, and they kind of get all huddled up in a group. And the teacher says, hey guys, like, we're gonna be uh, walking around. Us teachers will be kind of walking around to make sure you guys don't get in trouble. But you more or less have free reign of whatever you want to do today. Go ahead, explore any exhibits you want to. Go try out anything. You must stay within the dinosaur museum itself. You can't leave it. Uh, stay on the first three levels. If you have any problems, like, just come to the front desk, which is right over here, and points to where the front desk is on the first floor and says, and they'll be able to contact us as we've given them our numbers and the school's number. So yeah, anyways, guys, that's all we really wanted to say. Go off and have some fun. And the teacher says, oh, wait, one more thing. At 12, we'll be having lunch, so please return to the first floor for that. And then afterwards, for about 30 minutes, we're going to have a guided tour. And then for the next hour after that, you're free to go about and, like, look at whatever, uh, you know, sculptures, sculptures like dinosaur footprints or museum, whatever you want to look at, you are feel free to do that afterwards. So anyways, right, you know, Jade and her friends, they go off and they start looking around. And they're going around and they're looking at all the things that they learned and they're recognizing and they, they go up and they see like real life dinosaur footprints and then they're able to, they walk around this kind of recreation of like the prehistoric era. So there's these like fake bushes and a big fake dinosaur statue and it's actually pretty cool. And eventually they meet up with the Minecraft kid who seems to be like frantically looking around. Okay, maybe not frantically, but is intensely kind of like uh, pacing around trying to find something and they kind of look at him and jade is like hey is, is everything okay he's like i can't find the creeper like i i can't find anything about the creeper i've been looking for sculptures i've been looking for any kind of information i just can't seem to find anything at this point right jade had no idea that this was in fact not a dinosaur but instead was a minecraft character that the Minecraft kid assumed was real, and since there aren't any creepers around today, he assumed that since, you know, spiders in Minecraft are real, skeletons are technically real, the creeper must have been real too and just, you know, went extinct. So he was really looking forward to finding, you know, the creeper exhibit at this dinosaur museum. And uh, he keeps looking around, and Jade's like, hey man, like, uh, maybe ask someone at the front desk. 
So eventually, right, lunch came around, and Jade and her friends, you know, went down to the first floor, and they got all together, and the, the teacher said, hey, there's a lunch, you can stand in line for it, and then go sit down at the table. So they go in line, they, they get their lunch, and then they sit down at the table. And the Minecraft kid, after like 10 minutes, he gets there kind of late, because apparently he's busy trying to find the creeper, you know, exhibit part of the museum, and the teacher's like, it, you know, Jade is too far away to audibly hear what the teacher says, but the teacher's like, hey, like, the teacher looked a little upset that the Minecraft kid was so late, and then the teacher points to the food and then points to the tables, and the Minecraft kid gets some food and then sits down at the table, and Jade's like, oh, are you, uh, were you successful in finding the, the creeper exhibit? Remember, at this point, Jade has no idea what Minecraft is. So she legitimately thinks, like, the creeper is some more kind of, I don't know, niche, obscure uh, dinosaur from back in the day, and she just is like, oh, did you find the exhibit for your favorite dinosaur? Because she was able to find an exhibit with her favorite dinosaur, so she just honestly felt bad. The Minecraft kid so far has been able to say that creepers are dinosaurs to, you know, Jade, because she doesn't know any better, but the Minecraft kid is about to ask the tour guide and be, like, really persistent about it in front of literally everyone, and it's, it's pretty funny, but I don't want to interrupt the flow of the video, so I'm going to do the little comment thing now. Comment Ben. Uh, I'll, I'll heart your comment if you do it. And also, feel free to comment Ben multiple times. Like, you can go down and comment it, like, five different times. There's a, I guess there's a more decent shot. I'll actually see your comment and heart it. Either way, if you don't get a heart, don't feel bad. I'm going to heart as many as I possibly can. Just to say thank you guys so much for watching. And also, like, if you haven't already done so, join the Discord uh, link in the description. You can submit stories there and also talk to me occasionally. Anyways, right, uh, back to the story. So lunch is over, and now it's the, like, mandatory 30-minute tour guide. And so the tour guide's like, all right, guys, so we're going to go around and check out all the exhibits and just, like, go over things. And if you guys ever have any questions, just let me know. And before he's even, e before he's even able to finish that sentence, bro, the Minecraft kid, his hand shoots up, and the tour guide's like, yeah, what's up? And the Minecraft kid said, uh, when are we going to see the creeper exhibit? And everyone kind of just looks at him. And the thing is, right, while Jade didn't know what a creeper was, most of the guys and a lot of the girls in his class actually did know what a creeper was. Even if they didn't play Minecraft that much, they were at least aware. And some people started to laugh. And the Minecraft kid looks at him like, kind of like with this look of like, why are you laughing at me? Like, I simply asked the question, where's your creeper exhibit? Uh, which, like, as if, like, no one's gonna, like, laugh at that a little bit, What, but whatever, right? And the tour guide, like, Jade had no idea what a creeper was, so kind of gave him this look of, like, what are you talking about? And he's like, uh, I don't understand what you mean. And he was like, well, I'm just wondering when, because, like, we're seeing the pterodactyl, we're seeing dinosaur footprints, when are we gonna see the creeper exhibit? And once again, you know, the tour guide kind of just looks at him, and the Minecraft kid kind of gives him this look. He's like, oh, this museum sucks. It doesn't even have a creeper exhibit. At this point, right, the teacher's like, Minecraft kid, obviously, says his name. We'll just give him a name, right? Uh, we'll just call him Minecraft kid. He, the teacher was like, Minecraft kid, don't say that. And for some reason, right, the Minecraft kid must have been super excited to see the creeper exhibit at the dinosaur museum and was just really upset and disappointed that they didn't have one, that he kind of went on this tirade and he kind of stuck with it. And he was like, well, what do you mean stop? I mean, uh, this is a museum, right? This is supposed to be the biggest, most, the greatest dinosaur museum of all time, and they don't even have a creeper exhibit. This place sucks. And at this point, it's like super, super awkward, because the tour guides is kind of standing there like, uh, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. Everyone in the class is kind of looking at him like he's crazy, because they know what a creeper is, bro. They know what a creeper is, and they also don't, you know what else they know? They know that a creeper isn't real. The Minecraft kid looks at the tour guide straight on and is like, how could you work? It's such a fraudulent facility. This place is disgraceful. I bet the dinosaurs would be ashamed if they knew that you were doing this, which is just kind of funny, but hey man, it's a second grader. They're, they're bound to say stuff like that. And at this point, right, the teacher's like super embarrassed and the teacher goes up and like looks at the Minecraft kid and is like, stop, stop. I don't know what you're doing, but stop it. And, you know, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about this. And at this point, right, another kid in the class speaks up and he looks directly at the Minecraft kid and he's like, dude, you, what are you talking about? You know that, you know that creepers are fictional, right? And the Minecraft kid's like, uh, does fictional mean, like, prehistoric era only? Or, and then, and then the kid's like, no, dude, fictional means fake. Like, they're not real. And the Minecraft kid's like, uh, pfft. That, that's ridiculous, man. Spiders are real. Skeletons are real. Why wouldn't creepers be real? They're probably just extinct. You don't know what you're talking about. 
And at this point, right, the teacher looks at the other kid and is like, well, what do you mean fake? Is it from a video game? It looks at the Minecraft kid and it's like, are you making a big, are you making a scene about a video game? At this point, right, Jade is starting to put two and two together that no, creepers are not actually real as everyone has no idea what they are. And in fact, probably from a video game. And yes, they, they are. At this point, right, the Minecraft kid is starting to realize that his logic of if I don't see them now, they must be prehistoric and extinct. Maybe doesn't hold up because he's like, oh yeah, the Ender Dragon probably isn't real and the Wither probably isn't real. And he's like, uh oh. And he just realizes, right, that he just made a huge scene, called the tour guide like a fraud and a phony just because his museum didn't have a, uh, a, a creeper exhibit. And the Minecraft kid looks right up at the teacher who's just eyeing him like, dude. You've kind of messed this up, but you've embarrassed us all. And all of a sudden, right, the Minecraft kid feels this, like, hand on his on the collar of his shirt, and he looks up, and the teacher has grabbed his shirt and starts pulling him away. And Jade is watching the whole thing happen, and the Minecraft kid basically gets pulled away from making a scene, and the tour guide is like, all right, well, uh, let's continue on. So our first exhibit, dot, 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 whatever goes on to explain it, and essentially, right, the Minecraft kid got told that he's got to sit down because of, like, the big scene he made and that he's, he's not grounded. I don't know what to say. He's he's not like in suspension or anything, but he basically has to sit there at lunch for the duration, the rest of the duration of the field trip because he made a scene over Minecraft creepers not being in a dinosaur museum, which is, uh, if you're going to make a scene, man, at least have it be something real. And for like the rest of that school year, uh, you know, whenever the teacher would be like, all right, now we're going to learn about whatever. And she'd be like, any questions? Some like kid in the class would always raise their hand and be like, Yo, when are we going to learn about the creepers? And then everyone would, like, start laughing. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, right, the Minecraft kid kind of became the laughing stock for the rest of second grade. But he learned a pretty valuable lesson, and that is creepers are not real. I, I kind of feel like you wouldn't have to learn that lesson, but apparently you do. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some that are recommended. Go watch one. I'll be very happy. Bye. Today we got a story time of a Minecraft kid who actually thought the back rooms were real and had a complete freak out at the sleepover, and it was quite hilarious. So yeah, sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. I got today's story from a subscriber who we're going to call John, and I got the name John from the comment section down below. So as always, if you want me to use your name or your friend's name or really any name you want, literally just leave it in a comment down below. I look through the comments all the time to find a name to use in a video. So yeah, go ahead and do that. And anyways, right, so John, the subscriber, he told me the story that happened kind of recently. So if you don't know, recently there was like a viral video about the back rooms that went out. It was actually kind of like a, a mini series done by someone who did a really, really great job. I'm pretty sure I'll leave a link in the description or at least some information in the description so you can go watch that video if you'd like. But anyways, right, that video was so good that it actually convinced a lot of people that the back rooms were actually real. In fact, I did a video a couple days ago about another subscriber who sent in a story that the back rooms video actually made one of his friends believe it. And I guess he's not a Alone because today we have a story from the subscriber about how his friend saw that video, believed the back rooms were real, and had a complete freak out at his sleepover. But anyways, right, so this happened to John, the subscriber. And one day, right, he was just like, you know, you know, chilling with his friends, having a pretty good time. And, you know, we're just going to call this friend the Minecraft kid because he was just known for, you know, he was like known as like the, the bed war sweat in the in the class or whatever. So for that reason, we're just going to call him the Minecraft kid, right? So anyways, right, John, the Minecraft kid, and a couple other of their boys, right, they're going to have a good time. They're, they're excited. They're, you know, they're friends. Life is good. And they want to have a sleepover, right? So yeah, they talk to their parents. And sure enough, that weekend, they can have a sleepover. Life is good, man. Things are good. Well, life was good until a couple days before the sleepover, let's just call it like Wednesday or something, the Minecraft kid discovers the videos in the back rooms. And real quick, for some of you guys who don't know, the back rooms are kind of like an internet legend where you can essentially, like, if you're not careful, you can no-clip, which is a video game term, but basically you can phase out of reality into these endless rooms that are very similar to a kind of a dank, musty 1980s office. 
that this keeps going on and on and on and repeating itself. And that was kind of an internet legend that happened a little while ago, but more recently there was a video that someone made that was like kind of a live, not a live action, but it was like a film project that was really well done. And I suggest everyone watch it. But the thing is, a lot of people watched it, and on the younger side, a lot of people were like, wow, this is actually really believable. And the Minecraft kid was one of those kids. So the Minecraft kid ends up watching this video, and the next day, he comes into school, and, you know, the subscriber, John, is just kind of chilling there, having a good time, excited for the sleepover that's happening that weekend. And what happens, right, is, you know, his friend comes up to him, the Minecraft kid comes up to him, and John is looking at him, the Minecraft kid's his eyes are, like, wide, and the Minecraft kid's like, man, oh, man, I'm so worried. By the way, if you like story videos, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. Anyways, right, so, you know, he comes up to John, he's like, John, oh my god, like, oh my god. And John just kind of looks at the Minecraft kid like, bro, like, what is up? Like, are you good, man? Like, is is everything okay? You're looking really sweaty. Like, is are things okay? And, and the Minecraft kid's like, John, John, do you know about the back rooms? And John looks at him, he's like, yeah, you know, the internet legend. He's like, no, 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 John, 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 you don't understand, man. These things are real. And John looks at him like, bro, what are you, what are you talking about, man? Like, it, it's like a meme or like an internet legend. It's, it's, it's one of those creepypastas, man. Don't, don't tell me you're, you're going to say that, like, every other creepypasta that's ever existed is now real. Oh, yeah, Sonic.exe, that's real. Jeff the Killer, yeah, that, that's real, man. Yeah, anything that's on the internet is real because lesson one of the internet is anything you see is legit. But, you know, John can't convince the Minecraft kid that what he saw wasn't reality, and the Minecraft kid was convinced that, you know, he was like, John, I I I'm sorry that you're so naive right now, but, you know, it's dangerous, like, and I, I will convert you, like, I will, s you will see the truth, and that's, <laughs> that's kind of a weird cultish kind of thing to say, but whatever, right? He's like, John, you will see the truth, like, trust me, I, I, I will show you the truth, I will show you the way. And, you know, John's just like, all right, bro, like, whatever. Part of, like, John was thinking that this whole thing was kind of like a, an elaborate troll by the Minecraft kid. But then again, they were, you know, they are, because not were, this happened recently. They are, like, in fifth grade. And, you know, John's, like, not, like, uh, he, you know, he's a fifth grader. But he's still mature enough to know that, like, internet memes or internet creepypasta, they're not real, man. It's just not true. They're just not real. But the thing is, right, his friend had a bit more of a, let's just call it an active imagination, um, to put it lightly, and he has kind of done nothing like to this extreme before, but it wouldn't have been completely unbelievable, to John at least, that his friend the Minecraft kid would have believed this to be true. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, right, so, the, you know, John doesn't really think anything more of this, and sure enough, the sleepover comes, and, you know, he completely forgets about this encounter until a little bit later, as you guys will see. But anyways, it's the day of the sleepover, so, you know, everyone's going, coming over to John's house, and everything is totally normal at first. Like, everything is normal. Like, there's nothing weird. The Minecraft kid is just acting normal or as normal as the Minecraft kid had ever acted before. Um, and, you know, John really thought nothing of it. And this kind of seemed like there was going to be no story until later that night. So anyways, right, it's whatever. They stay up for a decent amount of time. And, you know, John's mother comes up and says, hey, guys, like, Glad you're having fun, but it's probably time for you guys to go to bed. Like, it's, it's getting pretty late. Like, alrighty now. Like, let's just, uh, let's wrap things up here. And they're like, okay, whatever, right? Fair, fair enough. It's like 11 or something, and we're in fifth grade. We go to bed early, whatever. And so, yeah, they're, you know, they're brushing their teeth. They're getting ready. And John is just brushing his teeth when he looks over and sees the Minecraft kid in his room staring at something. And it's just very, very strange, and he doesn't know why he feels so weird about it, but in retrospect, he was 100% on the money. Minecraft Kid was up to some nonsense, bro. Real quick, right, so the secret word of the day is backrooms. So comment backrooms, B-A-C-K-R-O-O-M-S, one, two, three, maybe five times if, you know, if you're super cool, you'll, you'll comment it five times. So I'm going to go through and heart a bunch of random people who comment. I, I can't heart them all at this point. I just have a lot of things going on and also a lot of comments, which I appreciate. But if you want to, like, you know, up your odds of getting, you know, a heart, just comment it more times. Don't do it more than five times, though. I don't want YouTube to, like, you know, remove your, you know, your 
comments or whatever or ban you from commenting. But I think five is a pretty decent number. So comment back rooms in the comments. And anyways, right, so the subscriber, John, he, he doesn't know why he feels so weird about the Minecraft kid kind of staring at something. But in retrospect, it all makes a ton of sense. And John, the subscriber, was 100% on point that something weird was brewing. But anyways, right, so, you know, they brush their teeth and the Minecraft kid eventually comes into the room and is, like, kind of very quiet for some reason. He just, he's just, like, weird. And, and, the Mi and you know, it's John, the subscriber, he just doesn't know why the Minecraft kid is acting so weird and strange. But he really doesn't really think anything of it at the time. He just notices it. Kind of makes, like, a mental, a mental note of it, but doesn't think anything of it at the time. In retrospect, makes a ton of sense. And the Minecraft kid, he's just acting weird. And he doesn't, you know, John is like, all right, you know, all right, guys, so let's go to bed. And John gets into his bed, and the Minecraft kid and the two other guys that are with them, they brought sleeping bags, and they plop them on the floor. Um, and, you know, they, John turns off the lights, and he expects that the next time that he opens his eyes will be, you know, at 7 in the morning or at 9 in the morning or whatever and to, to go down and eat some breakfast. But that is not the case because, you know, He's, 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 you know, middle of the dream. John's sitting there just, like, you know, enjoying his sleep. And, and he's, like, shaking, and he feels like he's moving back and forth. And he looks up, and it's the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid is, like, sweating and, like, freaking out a little bit. And John is, like, really, like, startled by this because, like, your friend just came up to you and is, like, you're, you're awoken by your, your friend shaking you. Like, something is wrong. Something is wrong. And the Minecraft kid, uh, John, is just like, oh, my God, like, what's up? And the Minecraft kid's like, Dude, I told you. I told you it was real. And at this point, like, John's like, dude, what are you talking about, man? Like, wh what are you saying? And, you know, the Minecraft kid's like, dude, just, just, just come with me. Come look. And at this point, like, John's terrified. He has no idea what he's about to show him. And the Minecraft kid brings him out to his hallway and points towards, like, a door or, like, a door to a room and there's like yellow light coming out of it. And one of the one of the things I'd like you need to know is in the back rooms, it's kind of like that kind of dingy yellow corporate lighting from the 80s and it just like isn't a good lighting job. But the problem is, right, that's a pretty common light. Like that type of lighting, it's not the greatest and it doesn't look that good. It still is pretty common. That's all I got to say. It's still pretty common lighting. So, yeah, sure enough the Minecraft kid points at this door and is like, "John, the back rooms they're real at this point john is like starting to really wake up and comprehend what's happening and he realizes that his friend is pointing at one of his rooms in his house that he probably just forgot to turn the light off and he woke him up terrified right assuming that the back rooms are real and it's proof and so john is like dude that's just oh. he's like dude that's just a room like it's just a room in my house. And John's like, no, it's not. And it's, it's, or not John, the Minecraft kid. So John's like, all right, whatever, dude. And, you know, John goes up into the room, turns off the light, and is like, bro, it's literally just a storage closet. Like, it's nothing. And, you know, this Minecraft kid's like, dude, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought it was. I don't know. I don't know what's up with me. And John, you know, gets, you know, starts feeling a little compassionate for his friend. He's like, you know what, man? It's okay. You're probably just, like, freaking out about something. Uh, let's just go back to the room. Uh, let's try and be quiet just so we don't wake up the other guys. I'm going to go in my closet. I'm going to try and find a night light, just plug it in, and then we'll just all go to bed, and things will be good. And John's like, yeah, man, I'm so sorry about this. Thank you. So they go in, right? And uh, sure enough, right, you know, John goes to the closet, turns on the closet light, and then the Minecraft kid starts screaming, the back rooms, no, John, don't fall for it. At this point, the other two kids who were blissfully sleeping, sleeping are just rudely awoken. And they're just like, oh, God, well, what's happening? And John's like, dude, what are you talking about? And then John looks at the closet, right? And he realizes, because he turned on the light to look for the, 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 uh, the, the night light. And he realizes that the light to the closet is the same kind of dingy yellow. And then at this point, right, the Minecraft kid's like, John, it's a trap. Don't fall for it. You're going to fall into the back rooms. Don't no clip out of re and, and, you know, at this point, you know, John turns around. He's like, dude, it's just the closet light. At this point, everyone's like looking up. And because they're like, what's going on? What's going on? And John's like, bro, is this what you were staring at earlier? The closet light? And the Minecraft kid is just kind of looking at John like... <laughs> I'm an idiot. Because at this point, right, the Minecraft kid, who has a very active imagination, to put it lightly, 
is now very much aware that, you know, both times, and probably more embarrassingly the second time, it was just a lighting choice. Uh, it wasn't actually the back rooms, you know, opening up to swallow them whole uh, or anything like that. And yeah, sure enough, uh, you know, the Minecraft kid is just like, yo, bro, I'm sorry. And at this point, like, the other two guys are like, dude, wh wh why am I awake right now? Like, it's 12. It it's literally midnight, bro. Like, why am I awake right now? And sure enough, like, you know, John is like, all right, wh whatever. He goes in the closet, turns the light on again because he turned it off to, like, prove it's not the back rooms. And no, the Minecraft kid did not freak out a third time, even though that would be pretty funny. He finds the nightlight, plugs it in, and they go to sleep and they wake up the next day. And the Minecraft kid kind of pulls John aside after they eat breakfast, which was pancakes, which are just a, such, such a good way to start the morning. And he pulls him aside. He's like, dude, I'm so sorry. I don't know what got into me. And John's like, bro, don't even worry about it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some in the recommended section. Go watch one. Make me very happy. Today Bye. we got a story time of a Minecraft kid who freaks out in class because he thinks Huggy Wuggy, yeah, like the big blue monster thing from that video game, is real and out to get him. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber Alex, and I got that name from the comment section, so leave a comment for any name you want me to use. But anyways, Alex told me the story about this time of when this Minecraft kid had this basically this massive freak out in class because he thought Huggy Wuggy, as I showed you a photo earlier, that kind of like that blue monster from that video game, was actually real. And you might be thinking, Connor, how did he even fall for this in the first place? Well, anyways, here's part one of what happened. Part one is actually tricking the Minecraft kid into believing it. And the subscriber was not the one who ended up tricking the Minecraft kid, because that's, I don't know, that's a little bit mean. I'll be honest, it just feels like a little bit mean to me, and the subscriber uh, also feels that way, or we're, I'm just going to call him Alex from this point on. But there's this kid in the class, right? So there's Alex, there's the Minecraft kid, and then there's also the kind of, we're just going to call him the bully guy. He's known for being kind of mean for like, you know, I don't know, tricking people, pranking people, but also kind of doing it in like mean spirited ways. And in part one of this story, essentially what happens is right. The bully guy, he's, you know, he's bored one day and he knows the Minecraft kid is kind of gullible and he's known as the Minecraft kid because he plays a ton of Minecraft and that's kind of his personality, which, you know, when you're in second grade, which is what grade they were in, man, like, I don't know. It's a cool game. That's fine if that's your personality. But anyways, right, one day, the bully was kind of just, like, chilling in class, and he was getting bored, and he wanted to mess with someone, and he knew that the Minecraft kid was pretty gullible, and, you know, he was like, you know what, let's try and convince this kid about that, you know, Huggy Wuggy is actually, like, a real thing. You know, for me, back in the day, for a little bit, I believed in this thing called, like, Bloody Mary. Essentially, back in my day, there was a little legend going around that if at 3 a.m., yes, before 3 a.m. became kind of a meme, if you went into your bathroom mirror at 3 a.m. with the lights off and said Bloody Mary's name three times, three times, you'd appear behind the mirror and then end you. Like, it was something like that. I know that sounds really dumb, but bro, I was in second grade and I kind of believed it. So, once again, right, the bully is like, you know what? We're gonna make the Minecraft kid believe that, yes, Huggy Wuggy is like a legitimate urban legend and will actually, you know, come after him if something happens. And the, mi and the bully kind of doesn't just want to scare him a little bit. He also wants to embarrass him in front of the whole class. So when the bully comes up with this idea, he feels pretty proud of himself. He feels pretty confident. He's pretty excited, you know. So he turns to both his friend, who we're going to call Ben, and also the subscriber, a.k.a. Alex, right? And Alex isn't necessarily friends with the bully. He just is, like, on okay grounds with him. And the bully turns to Ben and Alex and is like, hey... I have a pretty funny idea. So you see him over there, points to the Minecraft kid. I'm going to convince him that Huggy Wuggy is real. And at this point, Alex is like, I, like, that's fine. Like, whatever. Do what you want. But then the bully says, and then I'm going to do this. The bully goes on to explain to Ben and Alex that he's going to tell the Minecraft kid that Huggy Wuggy will only spawn when a teacher talks about something called the Black Death. If you don't know, that was something like the, the Black Plague or whatever. That was something that happened uh, in like the 1600s or maybe earlier, I kind of forget, where there's a disease that wiped out a lot of, you know, a lot of people on the planet. And the bully knew that they were really close to covering it in history class. And he was going to explain to the Minecraft kid that across schools, across the country, right, that talking about, like, you know, the Black Plague or the Black Death or, death or whatever was banned because they, like, the teachers knew it would spawn, like, 
huggy wuggy this evil creature whatever which sounds ridiculous but man they were in second grade and essentially the bully was gonna you know show him try and convince him of you know huggy wuggy's existence and then tell him if the teacher you know says anything about the black death or the black plague he will spawn and you know end us all or whatever knowing very well that the teacher was about to hop onto a unit about like you know the black plague and most likely the minecraft kid would have had a massive freak out in class so ben the bully's friend was like haha ha, that's so funny whatever but alex the subscriber was like all right man you know i don't know that sounds a little mean but but, you know, do what you want to do. And, you know, Alex kind of goes back to, you know, living his life or whatever. But, you know, he is close enough to, you know, both the Minecraft kid and, you know, Ben, or not Ben, but, but the bully guy to hear what the bully says to the Minecraft kid to try and convince him. So anyways, right, right after that conversation, the bully goes on his phone and finds some kind of like scary video of like, like a clip from the video game where Huggy Wuggy like jumps out and attacks like the player, but make sure not to show that it doesn't show any part that, you know, I don't know, shows that it's in a video game or shows that it's a YouTuber. So he goes ahead and he goes on this like downloader app. He downloads the video from YouTube and then he cuts it. So it's just like, you know, the Huggy Wuggy jump scare or whatever. He's like, all right, this is my proof. And I'm going to go up to the Minecraft kid and try and convince him. So anyways, right, the bully does go up to the Minecraft kid and the bully's like, man, I got something really, really important to tell you. And the Minecraft kid's like, oh, bro, what's up? Like, what's going on? He's like, hey, man, I, 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 <sighs> This is just, like, I need to get the word out about this. It's, like, for the safety of others. He's like, dude, my cousin, my cousin had a friend who went to the school. And in this school, they, you know, they didn't get the message. And, you know, the Minecraft kid's like, what do you mean they didn't get the message? And the police like, they didn't get the message not to talk about the Black Plague. And, you know, Minecraft kid's like, oh, I don't know what that is. He's like, okay, so here's basically what happened. For some reason, right... Across the country, whenever, you know, teachers were talking about, you know, trying to teach their kids about the Black Plague, th th this creature, th th this big blue creature would just appear and you would just end them all. And uh, just just look and he shows them a video. He doesn't call the creature Huggy Wuggy, right? Because it's like that's a little like <laughs> that might throw him off a little bit. The name is a little like a little bit too cutesy. He's like, I'll leave that out. And then like, you know, the Minecraft kid is like, oh, my God. But then the Minecraft kid's like, wait a minute. Why haven't I heard about this? And, you know, the, the bully, like, thinks for a second. He's like, oh, shoot. And he's like, oh, the government, they're, they're trying to cover it up, man, because it would be mass hysteria. We'd literally have a civil war. Why would we have a civil war? I don't know. It sounded scary and hyperbolic, so might as well say that. But anyways, the bully's like, they tried to cover it up, but my cousin, he had a friend, and his friend, like, he was leaving to go to the bathroom as the big blue monster came in and ended all of his friends. He was able to escape... And, you know, the FBI came and came to his house and said that he couldn't tell anyone. And, uh, but, you know, he needed to get the word out just, just in case. He said, if a teacher, right, if for some reason our teacher has not gotten the word and, and they start teaching us about the Black Plague, right, you have to get up and you have to stop them at all costs. I, I, I just need to, I just need to let more people know. And at this point, right, the Minecraft kid's like, oh man, like, thanks for letting me know. I appreciate that. And the bully, just like, he, he puts both hands on the Minecraft kid's shoulders and looks him directly in the eyes. And he's like, just remember, if you have to take one thing away from what I'm saying, if our teacher starts talking about the Black Death, the Black Plague, whatever you want to call it, you'll know it when you hear about it. This is what's going to happen to all of us. And he reaches back into his pocket, pulls out his phone, goes into his videos, and shows him the video again. At this point, right, the Minecraft kid is completely convinced. And just remember, the Minecraft kid was already kind of gullible, plus they were all in second grade. Normally, if you, did, if you did this to, like, some random, like, high schooler, yeah, it wouldn't work. But, bro, the Minecraft kid, at this point, he was both terrified and convinced. So the bully walks back, you know, he, the bully walks over to, uh, you know, back to his table, and he's kind of, like, smiling, and he looks over at Ben and kind of gives him, like, a high five or whatever. And, you know, Alex, the subscriber, is looking at this like, bro, this kid's kind of a jerk, if I'm being honest. So nothing really happens for the rest of that day, and nothing actually happens for a couple more days. But about three days later, they all get into class, they sit down, right? Alex, the subscriber, has more or less kind of forgotten about what has happened in the last couple days, and is just kind of like thinking about like normal things, and he's like, oh, I wonder what we're going to learn about in history today. And sure enough, the teacher goes up, and he's like, all right, class, we've reached that period in history where we're going to be talking about the Black Plague. And at this point, right, as soon as Alex heard those words, 
everything kind of like snapped back into him and remembered exactly what the bully's plan was. And Alex looked over at the Minecraft kid and he, he was able somehow to see at the angle he was, he was able to see the Minecraft kid's face and the Minecraft kid's face was like completely pale, like in complete shock. And the Minecraft kid was about to act. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, which if you're hearing this, you did, uh, comment Huggy Wuggy down below. Uh, that's two words, by the way. I just want to see how many people made it this far into the video, as I really, really do appreciate people who watch my videos. And also, if you haven't already done so, consider subscribing. It'll make me very happy, and you'll get zero seconds of good luck, which is a fantastic deal. Anyways, back to the video. Anyways, right, sure enough, you know, Alex, the subscriber, is sitting there like, oh no, like, the Minecraft kid, what is he gonna do? And yes, sure enough, right, you know, the Minecraft kid, he gets up, and he literally says, no! Like, he just screams out no in front of everyone, and everyone kind of just, like, goes super silent, because they're just like, why is this, why did this kid just scream out no? The teacher's face is just this look of, like, complete shock and confusion with a little bit of horror, because he's just like, oh my god, why did this kid just get up in front of everyone and scream, no! Because at this point, right, the teacher and nobody else besides the bully, Ben, and, you know, the subscriber, Alex, have any idea about why any of this is going on. And, right, the bully and Ben are trying so hard not to laugh right now. Alex, like, looks over and takes, like, a peek and says, yeah, these kids are trying not to laugh so hard. By the way, don't worry, the bully's gonna get some karma in just a second, but it'll... T it's towards the end, but he does get karma. Don't worry. What goes around comes around, just as Justin Timberlake said, baby. Don't worry about it. And the teacher, finally, after being kind of, like, shocked for a second, you know, looks at the Minecraft kid and says, what are you talking about? And the Minecraft kid's like, no, don't talk about, you know, the Black Plague. And the teacher's like, uh, it's in our unit. Why, why do you not want... He's like, a, gr a big blue monster! He's gonna come eat us all! And at this point, right, the class is just like, what? What the heck? What? What is going on right now, man? What is going on? And the teacher looks at the Minecraft kid and is like, uh, come again? And the Minecraft kid's like, you don't, you don't understand. Uh, there, there's this like, uh, there's this creature, this big blue creature that you know he's going around from school to school, and if the teachers talk about you know the the Black Plague, he comes and ends them all. And at this point, right, the teacher's like, Minecraft kid, he says his actual name. He's like Minecraft kid. That is obviously not true. Also, I just said you know the Black Plague. If that was true, wouldn't there be a big blue creature coming out right now? And sure enough, you know. No, Huggy Wuggy did not appear from the ceiling and, like, FNAF-style jump scare them all. That just didn't happen. Sure enough, believe it or not. And, yeah, the Minecraft kid is, like, like sitting there, still kind of panic, freaking out. He's like, uh, uh, and then, like, the Minecraft kid is starting to realize how ridiculous of a statement he just because he kind of did it on instinct he was like he was thinking about it because for like the last two days he was having like nightmares about like you know the big blue monster which happened to be like huggy wuggy or whatever right and he's like oh my and he was freaking out about it so the second that the teacher said the, like the kind of the key word that was supposed to like doom them all he freaked out but after he said it and out loud in front of everyone he kind of realized how dumb it was and he kind of sat back down he's like sorry teacher i i don't know what got into me at this point, right, the whole class starts laughing, and the subscriber, Alex, you know, he's not having it. He's like, nah, man, this Minecraft kid, he's not a bad kid. I'm not for this. And anyways, right, you know, the bully and Ben, his friend, are just laughing so hard right now. Even the teacher giggles a little bit, which, fair enough, right, you know, I mean, it's kind of wild what just happened. He's like, alright, class, don't worry about a big blue monster coming out to destroy us all. Uh, I can promise you personally, that that will not happen. And then everyone laughs again a little bit, and then they go on to actually go into the history lesson. And, you know, sure enough, right, you know, Alex is sitting there throughout the entire class. He was thinking to himself, man, this is not right. Like, that was wrong. Like, that kid did not deserve that. So eventually, right, the class ends, and everyone gets up, and they go off to their next class. But Alex... He kind of, like, takes a little longer to pack up his stuff so that, like, naturally everyone will leave for him. And he's kind of there. He puts his stuff into the bag. And the teacher's sitting at his desk, kind of, like, looking at his paperwork or whatever, getting ready for his next class. And Alex's subscriber goes up and says, hey, can I talk to you for a second? And the teacher's like, yeah, sure. 
And Alex then goes on to explain everything. He kind of goes on to explain everything that I told you in this story. And the teacher is looking at him the whole time like, hmm, all right, good to know. And yeah, sure enough, right? The teacher thinks about it and is like, yeah, that was kind of mean. That was kind of mean of the bully guy. And the bully guy had a history of doing stuff like this before. Maybe, you know, if it was a kid who was like genuinely known as like a good kid and he just thought it'd be kind of funny to have a little prank or whatever, he would get away with it maybe just with a little talk or something. But no, this kid had had a, like a history of being kind of a, a massive jerk. So yeah, sure enough, the teacher's like, all right, Thank you for letting me know. I will handle this. Yeah, and sure enough, later that day, you know, Alex, the subscriber, is kind of walking in the hallways, and, you know, he the bully isn't near him, but he hears on the loudspeaker, and it's like, says the bully's name, but he's like, uh, can bully, insert last name, please come to the front office. I repeat, can bully, insert last name, it's first name, last name, you know what I mean. We'll say, like, Ben Dover. So, uh, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I've seen that comment so many times. Anyways, can, can, like, I don't know, uh, Ben, Steve, or whatever, come to the front office if that was the name of the bully? Um, and sure enough, right, you know, the, the bully got a pretty big talking to. And while he didn't necessarily get suspended, apparently, he was on very, very thin ice. And if he did anything like that again, like, you know, he was going to be, like, in, in school suspension for a couple days. And also, his mom got called and was told all about that, which, I don't know, man, sometimes that's the worst punishment of them all. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and uh, go watch another video if you're bored. Bye. Today we have a story time of a kid who thinks a Freddy Fazbear is real, in his house, and out to get him. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, subscribe, and let's get right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who sent in this story, we're going to call him Dylan. And uh, by the way, I got that name from the comment section, so leave a comment down below of any names you want me to use. And this story all started one night when Dylan was babysitting this kid in his neighborhood. So Dylan got to the house and, you know, the kid's mom, and we're just going to call the kid Ben because I use Ben for every, like, other name. It's kind of a meme on the channel at this point. Anyways, right, so the kid, a.k.a. Ben, his mom came down, like, greeted him at the door because, you know, uh, Dylan got to the door, rang the doorbell, and, you know, Ben's mom greeted him. And she's like, oh, thank you so much for coming. I know this is kind of on short notice, but I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, all you got to do is just, like, hang out with, you know, D uh, Ben's already been fed. You don't have to give him dinner. All you got to do is just hang out with him for a couple hours. His bedtime is at 9, and uh, afterwards, just kind of stay in the house till we get back, which is going to be around, like, 11 or so, and I really, really do appreciate this. And Dylan's like, oh, it's no problem at all. Like, you know, Ben's a great kid. Because this is, like, the second or third time that Dylan has babysat for Ben. Uh, Ben's mom is friends with Dylan's mom. They're not, like, super close, but they're friendly enough, right? So anyways, right, you know, it's, it's kind of like a routine babysitting gig. And sure enough, Ben's mom leaves to go do whatever she's going to go ahead and do. And, and it's time for Dylan to start babysitting Ben at this point. And, you know, it's pretty normal in the very beginning. Um, things are kind of chilling until things start to get a little bit weird. So for some reason, I don't remember exactly what, Dylan was like, oh, uh, want me to go get whatever. And, you know, Ben was like, yeah, no, that sounds like a good idea. And Dylan's like, all right, well, that's probably in the basement, so I'm going to go down there. And when, you know, you know, Dylan says, I'm going to go down to the basement, Ben looks at him and goes, no, you can't do that. And, you know, Dylan was really this startled by this because Dylan had gone in the basement before because, he, you know, that's why he knew where whatever he was trying to get was. And, you know, this had never been an issue before. And also Ben was kind of, he wasn't necessarily a quiet kid, but he wasn't known to have random outbursts for no good reason. So, you know, Dylan was both concerned and confused. So, you know, Dylan turned to Ben and was like, dude, like, what's wrong? Like, is everything okay? And Ben is just looking at him like, you, you don't understand what's down there, man. You, you, you don't know what I've seen. And at this point, right, you know, Dylan's just kind of looking at him like, bro, what are you talking about? Is the boogeyman down there? Is a big scary monster down there? And the kid, a.k.a. Ben, is just looking at him like, you're not going to believe me, but... Freddy Fazbear is down there. And at this point, right, Dylan, you know, Dylan, you know... He, he knows what Five Nights at Freddy's is. If you don't know, Freddy Fazbear is like one of the animatronic characters from this video game. Five Nights at Freddy's is a very fun game. I used to really enjoy it as, as a kid. But anyways, right, Dylan was aware 
of what that game was. He was at least aware, and he was like, Ben, there's a 0% chance that Freddie Fazbear is down there. And Ben looks at him like, dude, no, you don't understand. So Dylan kind of has like a smirk on his face, and he looks at Ben, and he's like, all right, you want to make a bet? I'm going to go down there, and I bet you like a, a firm high five, right, that uh, I will find zero animatronics. I won't find Freddy Fazbear. I won't find Chica. I won't find any of those guys down there. I bet you a whole high five that, you know, I'll find no one down there. And, you know, I mean... Look, obviously Dylan like was just trying to like calm Ben's nerves.